The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song, and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone, and then boom. With Jason Ross. No, he did it. Yes, he did. Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. everybody welcome in hi i'm dave that's jason that's all hi uh, that's uh that's uh chris for law let's kick it let's <laughs> let's let's absolutely kick it uh it is monday love you good love morning show. love your show it's all fantastic everything's good everyone's in a great mood yeah Jason just wrote something. Thank you on the sheet. Um, it was like a little one of the uh, Valentine's. It says, be mine. <laughs> Did you ever do Valentine's when you were a... Uh, Loved it. Yeah. Oh, strategically placed the, the message tarts, the candied hearts. So if it was like, oh, I kind of kind of like her. So let's, you know. Yeah. Let's spice these up. This. Wait, what do little- you mean? You just put loose... Hearts in the absolutely with my <laughs> grimy second grade hands all over them. Yeah, hello. I just had a uh, I just had a uh, a piece of knowledge I've had for a long time completely changed. I just I, I, let me let me back up. We're giving away uh, tickets today to go see ELO, Jeff Lynn's band, awesome classic band, rad, whatever. So. I've one cool nugget I've always had is um, on the song "Blaze of Glory" by John Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. a song really everyone likes. Let's just be honest; just a, just univer- down. universally, just a great song. Anyways, on that on that song, "Once Upon a Time," I always John Bon Jovi did that as a solo project for the movie Young Guns Two, mm-hmm. and I just always had assumed that Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi did the backup harmony vocals on the chorus right which are fantastic and then somebody told me that it was actually jeff lynn who did the backup vocals but then i just wanted to double check that before we talked about the tickets it wasn't jeff lynn it was jeff beck oh childhood ruined jeff lynn's a whole different whoever told you that lied yeah now i gotta find I out who, you weren't a liar yeah and i gotta find out who uh elo is still dope though um Dope and rad. They you are use that for them. Yellow slaps. Yes, bangers. Yeah. They 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 put out nothing but bangers and mash. So uh, <laughs> we have tickets for that for you. Uh, how was your weekend, Jason Ross? Uh, it was wonderful. How about yours? Uh, it was good. Anything did you enjoy good? the weather? I did. I yeah. did. I went up the hill uh, where it was still. It was back down. <laughs> I did actually. It was. Uh, There's still snow, like old, dirty, piled up uh, snow on the side of the snow. Whatever. Don't eat brown snow. Yeah, don't eat the brown snow. So that was cool. They, you know, whatever. But um I'd be really nice up there. It I mean, was it crisp was, still. Yeah, crisp is a great word yeah. for it. Like the morning is definitely a jacket. Yeah. Um and then this is kind of uh the the world I live in now. Uh yesterday we had uh my wife no, my daughter at the behest of my wife, um, and I, my daughter convinced me to participate and what she proudly called puppy photo shoot. She wants she wants pictures of the dogs, right? All and of them or just the new one? Nacho won't. She's just wow. No, we look, Nacho's my dog. I'm her person. She's my dog. Like I'm the I'm the defender of the Nacho. But at this point, like I've said, she lives to crawl under the clothes in our closet. Uh, if I take a nap, she wants to burrow under the covers in between the mattresses. And then whenever the little dog even approaches her, she does the like, I'm showing my teeth thing. And she can't even like, I've been like, no. And she can't help it. Anytime the dog gets near her, it's just, you know, 
She just doesn't want to deal with it. She's just very, very old. So we kind of, like, Nacho's my lap dog. I watch TV. Mm-hmm. Nacho's, I pay my taxes. That's Nacho. Exactly. She just <laughs> she just can't be bothered with any of it. Gusso and Gracie, they're, you know. Whee! Oh, my God. So you, you know those stepbrother? This is what my daughter was trying to create. You know the stepbrother photos where yeah. they're kind of looking off in the distance? This doesn't work. They're wearing sweaters. That's what we finally got. Okay. I mean, this took an hour, Jason. Wow. That's what we do now. We take we have puppy photos. That was your Sunday. That was most Saturday. Of, that was most of my Sunday when I yeah when we came back down. Uh, can't take the dog up yet because the vaccinations have to kick in and all oh. that. Not getting political. Relax. It's not a COVID vax for the dog. It's for like ticks and stuff. So mm. everybody calm down. Uh, but yeah. So um, so your dog can't do TikTok. No, just talk. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Talks way too much. Uh, and then my wife and kids went to uh, her friend's house who loves to cook. And uh, they, I, I thought we were going to do St. Patrick's Day dinner. Oh, yeah. But she went over there. And so I just stayed at home and, and watched the, the, the golf oh, yeah. and some, some basketball. And then I hooked up my, uh, my PlayStation, the downstairs TV, because I don't ever get to do that. And I sat there with the dogs and played video games on a sunday it was a pretty uh so you're pretty happy about that oh uh, you know it was, it was a good it was day great weekend she brought back leftovers i got hungry though so i went to the store and i thought you were gonna do uh corned beef yeah yeah i was i was gonna do it yesterday i didn't remember that she was going to a friend's house so we're gonna do corned beef i still have all the stuff so we're just gonna do corned beef in like three days we'll do like wednesday thursday wow. yeah friday. i know friday yeah friday yeah friday's Friday's usually burrito day. That's honestly, we have burrito Friday. I make burritos. Burrito Friday. It's got a ring to it. Burrito Friday. I, yeah. I, I make, they, they love Who doesn't them. love burrito Friday. I know. Who doesn't? So famous. I, uh, well, there's no day with a B, right? Right. So it's like burrito, you know, it's not like Taco Tuesday. Right. But yet you don't have tacos. But no, you gotta have falafel Friday. Flan. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I, I have no issues Fish. with falafel. Yeah. Fried chicken. You've been cooking Ooh, fried, fried chicken. chicken Fridays. Fried chicken Friday. <laughs> uh, what would be mutton Mondays? Taco Tuesdays. Of course. Right? Obviously, mutton Everyone Monday. has mutton. Well, what else? Muffaletta sandwich Mondays? Uh, meatball. Meatball Meat Monday. Loaf. Meatloaf Mondays. Taco Tuesdays. Waffle. Waffle Wednesdays? Um, what, what? Wet burrito. Wet burrito Wednesdays. What well, burrito always sounds weird. To it me, does. Whatever. Uh, could you do something with the t- sound for Thursday? Or does it have to be a th- th- thumbnail? Th- thumbnail th- thumbnail th- Thursday. Th- th- yeah, I don't know. We'll come back to that. Uh, I'm still on Friday Fun of Games. We'll skip. <laughs> and then Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Stew. Stew. Oh, Saturday's already taken care of. Which is? Salad Saturday. <laughs> Great point. Wow. We have some. Pretty much getting something for everything yes, now. And Stu Sunday. And Stu Sunday. Yeah. There we go. So we just got to work on. Th- yeah, I don't know. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursdays, yeah. So you just have a. Protein shake? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What else do I have for you? Uh, I don't have anything for you. Uh, <laughs> our contracts are coming up soon. Are they? Think about that over the weekend. Are we going to be back? <laughs> June 1st. I think you and I, you and I are on the same track now, right? Aren't we? Mm-hmm. We used to be July, now we're June. We're oh, June. is it? Or am I, I, I think it's. I think they moved us to June. Last That'd be June. weird if uh, they said, mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> "What? What do you just gotta go?" When it's time for a change. <laughs> um, <I go> off. <laughs> you couldn't come up with. We need somebody who can. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna? Are you gonna ask for anything special this year? A th- a th- yeah. Yeah. How about you? More of the same. I don't know that I've ever asked for anything. Mm. Well, and we're not getting money. Yeah. Um, so then, no. I don't think we get. I don't think. I don't think I can ask for any more days off. Eh, pretty much now. Good. Uh, I think all the stuff I'm gonna ask, I'm just gonna ask for stuff and say, give it to Chris. Chris's been doing a great job. Good idea. Yeah. Chris deserves more. And what are you gonna ask? Oh for? man, I'm out of cash. <laughs> what are you gonna ask for that's gonna go to Chris? 
It would be hilarious to ask for it be one of those uh, garage parking spots. <laughs> I just pull up in my crappy yeah. car. <laughs> hey, how mad would that make our GM? I'm gonna probably park, pretty mad. Probably park next yeah. to Chris. I always feel like the garage, that other garage is kind of mm-hmm. random who gets in there. The big garage, the yeah. warehouse? Yeah. Can't, uh, can't we park in there if we will really know. wanted to, I think? People yeah. need to charge and plug in going there. I, I don't know. think they have that anymore unless they brought it back, but... For a while after, as our sales manager, and he used to drive his uh, Tesla here, but I think that was his cord. So Whoa. the plug is still in there, but the the cord is. Well, I don't know, but you have. Yeah, does I do. Come with a cord. Uh, well, yeah, it but it's to. it's at home. I'd have to bring. I don't have right. an action. I don't have an action. But is it a pain to bring? Isn't it just throwing in the back of the trunk? Or well, yeah, I'd have to unplug it from the side of the house. Oh, I mean, I it's see. not a pain. It just. Yeah, you know, I just I just charge it at home. Gotcha. I used to be really intimidated by the that part. Yeah, but then it's like I remember there was a day you couldn't get here because you weren't charged. Right, that was yeah, that yeah. was yeah. Well, well, I can leave, but I need to wait about twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was neat because I didn't. I, I made that mistake one time because you got to wait for it to turn green, and I didn't do that. I didn't plug uh, it. That was my green fault. means go. Green means go. You have to. I have to replace the cord like once every couple of years. Was, I was really intimidated by it, but then it was like two hundred bucks to. Yeah put the plug on the side of my house and then and then i get to make the dad joke hey, go to the gas station kids and then i plug it in uh um, like that go to the gas station kids <laughs> it's a little bit like have you ever been rving um gone rving <laughs> let me i don't know let me think no but did yours no, have I the full clean outs and everything like a full, yes and yeah we wasn't had. that a bit in- intimidating yes and then it was you do it, you're like oh this is super easy you know what you're right that's actually a great example yeah we i didn't know if you guys had the full clean outs and all no that. i've been i've been once and yeah we had well the rule but so the, on that trip were you doing that or uh uh i sean think or, i think sean did it most well no elliot did it actually elliot because elliot? elliot had no had done it before gotcha. and so like well, well like it was a team effort like he put the thing and then one of us would do the lever or whatever yeah. it was um <laughs> right oh, very yeah. intimidating yeah. uh you're right and but we also had a rule there too like it was all uh what do they call it uh gray water or white water or whatever there was no uh nobody uh well how do i say this nobody pooped on the rv the whole trip <laughs> <laughs> great analogy no, that was a rule i know yeah. i was trying to find a great way to put it but yeah, yeah no you just didn't no nope. yeah we made it all the way to new york and back three guys not one not one of us it was actually do you think that's true oh yeah because i think you'd know it was a pretty confined yeah. space it is you'd know okay i mean unless somebody lied or like, did, i can't make it to the next rest stop right i yeah i and, and you know in an emergency i think yeah. I mean, but we just is this streak that you consider all the fast food we ate you were going streak and going we, and we that's what we were trying to avoid yes um I'm out. I know. Oh, back to that. I know what I'm going to, I think I know what I'm going to ask for. Hmm. Uh, I have asked for it two straight years and they haven't given it to me. I want to do uh more summertime remote broadcast. Okay. Let's see. What do you think? What's your guess? Think I get it. Why has it been no before? Everybody should be in the studio. Oh, from the big boss. Uh, oh no. man, I'm out of cash. Well, the big boss two years ago was like, no, just no, no, no. Like it was just hard, immediate now. Yeah. And then last year was like, well, you know, I mean, talk to, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan, but you know, talk to our then PD. The yeah. Then PD was like, so you've got a new one now. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Seems like we've had a lot of conversation. Let's oh. let, wait for the new PD to get. <laughs> right. That's been pretty constant. Let's for a wait while. for the new PD to get comfortable. Um, I think. I think it, it, the only thing we need to figure out is how to get Chris to be able to remote board up, because then we could all. You could be home wherever yeah. you want to be. I'd be there and be there. That's where to be. That's where to be. <laughs> uh, all right, we got a lot to talk about today, and you know what? Eric Hazeltine's joining. Us. He is. I noticed, by the way, in the rundown that we have Frankie, and this is no disrespect to Frankie. Just you'll know what I'm talking about. We have Frankie from nine to nine thirty. We're going to do an extended segment Can with Frankie. Be. Can yeah. be. We have Eric from eight twenty seven to eight forty. What is your confidence level that we're going to be anywhere near on time in that segment? And by the way, I know I'm a huge part of that, but it's Eric. Eric is on confidence level. Eric is on the Mount Rushmore of Salisbury, Papa, Hasseltine, probably somebody else. I'm not, I can't think of right now of no chance. Are you getting that in 10, 10, 13 minutes? 
Um, yeah, if you want to be on exact, yeah, not not high. Not 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 high. Well, good. Well, that speaking of, we'll talk to him. Uh, it's coming be up, great. It's gonna be a blast. Always good to talk to Eric at eight twenty seven nine a.m. Frankie, and uh, you know, even though it happened on Saturday, I want I would like to spend some time on the Kings Knicks game. Absolutely, this is one of my loss aside for three quarters favorite games of the year. Oh, interesting. I know, right? I didn't like the loss, but mm-hmm. we'll get to leading off and all that. Welcome in. It's a Monday next. Please. <laughs> the only place you'll find Harrison Barnes is Sacktown Sports. He's got the bucket at the buzzer. Harrison Barnes. Hey, Sacramento. It's Harrison Barnes. And you're listening to the home of the Sacramento Kings, Sacktown Sports. Your local sports leader. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Tim Walsh, director of sales for Bridgestone Golf, was excited to talk about the new line of Tour B golf balls. Bridgestone has been making golf balls since 1935, and their philosophy was to serve society with superior quality. All these years later, quality is not in question. While we as players tend to settle on a ball that will increase our distance or one that will enhance feel, the Tour B line of golf balls delivers both distance and feel through their new reactive smart cover and mid-layer. PGA Tour player Jason Day assisted on the development of Mindset, which is a visual cue on the golf ball to remind you of a three-step process. First is to identify your target, then visualize the shot path, and then focus on the dot, which helps to clear your mind and execute the shot you visualized. Mindset is available on the full line of Bridgestone Tour B golf balls. To learn more, visit BridgestoneGolf.com. That's your golf to go. I'm Frank LaRosa. Let's do it. Leading off the three top stories in the morning. Huge news. This is very important. Here's cut number one. This New York defense just relentless, so physical, collapsing three defenders around Sabonis and forcing them into the turnover. Turnover number 12 by Sacramento. Can they get another defensive stop? They're going to have to. 45 seconds to go in this one. Brunson calmly across the midcourt line. Now drives to the right, wiggles to the left, floaters up, gets in. 40-point game for Jalen Brunson. Knicks lead 96-91. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard um, it again in that highlight. I know when you play highlights later, the screamer. Uh, I had a Knicks fan screaming right in the ear. That's why, like, it should be illegal, like, squirt guns. What do you just go? She's just loud. Yeah, it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah, like in uh, look, it's always dangerous to gatekeep fans. Yeah, people, people, you pay for your ticket, right. you absolutely. Do, but it's like I want to ask that person, like, what do you, what do you do? First off, props on the stamina. Yeah. Oh, all game long. Right. But like, are do you think? Do you think the the players are like, hey. Yeah, I wouldn't have done it without screaming person. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then you've got everyone around you. Yeah. Like, you, 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 you know. It, and it, it was just a different pitch. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's it's very much like, an, a, like a, a, a vocal flatulence that permeates throughout <laughs> the section. Yes. And, and it's just it's exactly what it was. Noise pollution. Yeah. It's like rock and roll. You know, it's just. I don't know the whole that we just this society just we we barrel more and more towards I don't care what's around me yeah I'm going to do the thing I would like that's true that's very true I am going to leave my stereo up full blast yeah. at the gas station I'm going to drive how I want in the yeah. far left lane and yeah. uh, you know I'm going to take my time uh, paying for this stuff because yeah. I'm I'm sending it's a me. text I'm ignore this the rules. is what happens when you tell every child that they are special mm. yeah wow. Chris, that was a that was a semi boomerang comment from Chris. Yeah. That is a hundred percent accurate and very unexpected. Wow, Monday's unexpected moment brought to you by don't know yet. We'll get a sponsor. I loved this game until the fourth quarter because I thought the refs just just d- turned in their whistles, and I, I'm I'm not going to do the whole like the refs cost the Kings the right. game. In fact, the Kings had more free throws than the Knicks. First time uh, in 18 games they've outscored the opponent from the line. Really? First well, time. That's a heck of a stat. Yeah. Uh, also, could we fix the split screen, please? That's got to be scaring a lot of people, Chris. 
Hi. I mean, it's just my face. Close up. So I loved the style. I loved the physicality. I was not in the building. I was watching on television, but Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, because I I thought it was palpable. The um look. When you go to, for example, a concert versus a basketball game versus a MMA fight, there's three different types of atmospheres. I very much thought this was a, not in a bad way, just almost like a blood is in the air. This is a different type of game. The crowd was really, really into this thing, and it was a different type of energy. It was physical for sure. It felt yeah. like football. I mean, the yeah. way they were being, the way both teams played. Now, you know, sometimes we question, can the Kings handle this? I thought, I thought the Kings matched the physical nature just over time. It's in the Knicks' DNA. Right. I think the Kings brought it. They did. But, you know, that the by the very, very end, the best player on the floor, though, was Jalen Brunson. My goodness. And he had the signature moment of the night, especially it's funny People get caught up in the moment with all the key on uh, Ellis should start stuff. And he, that was, that's going to be on Shackton, man. Mm-hmm. And it poor key on looking for the screen. Yeah. And that just on it. Uh, what, what the, the funny thing is, and, and I could be wrong here. Key on Ellis is, is going to get a few snickers at what we're talking about is Jalen Brunson uh, faking a screen was coming over and getting key on looking to his right. And then just zooming past him for the layup. And a lot of people, I get it, are are kind of getting on key on about that, or at least pointing it out. Seems to me, though, what that actually pointed out a little more is that the Kings' back end communication on the floor might be faulty too. I'm not entirely sure that that's Keon's responsibility mm-hmm. and not the responsibility of those behind him to call out the screens, allowing him to stay on his man. Sure. And if that's the case, and that's a very teachable moment for Mike Brown saying, our guy Keon, who's on an island with Jalen Brunson, is getting killed over this. But in reality, if Keon trusted you guys behind him to be calling these screens out that are coming up, yeah. he would never have to turn his head. So I, I, I'd be very curious to see if anyone will or has asked Mike Brown about that. But there's a lot to get into with this game. This I thought this was a playoff intensity level mm-hmm. game, a very similar playoff level game. And I think there's also something we need to talk about a little bit too. Maybe it's a big deal. Maybe it's not. Uh, I believe if my eyes were correctly i believe DeMontis sabonis was scoreless in the fourth uh i think so if not i know he only had three in the second half so yeah roughly yeah and i think that's something i think that's at least something we need to explore maybe there's a great explanation for it yeah. or maybe you know the kevon looney truthers are going to come out of the woodwork again and can DeMontis sabonis play when his phys- physicality levels are met which is very very rare is he as effective uh, to say very rare, I mean, have we said this once this season? No. Or barely any. And the other part, too, is he had two assists. I know, yeah. For the game. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I know we hate to say it. Credit to New York's philosophy. Yes. They they did it yes. differently. Yes. That no. was a different approach. I think I am big on credit New York today. Yeah. Like, I, I, that is... That is a throwback style in this day and age of Olay defense yeah. that I am here for. I appreciate. Well, we'll get it. We'll yeah, get, we got a lot to get into here. All right, well, let's move on. A lot more on that. Cut number two, please. Cut number two. We go back to the combine. The Bears general manager Ryan Poles said that they were going to try to do right by Justin Fields and get him situated in his new home by the time the new league year started, which just happened to be this past week but the fact of the matter is it was the soft trade market as the compensation for him shows and the bears felt that they were doing right by justin fields to move him now to get him to his new team now despite the fact that the compensation turned out to be lower than some people thought it would be it's a 2025 conditional sixth round pick that could be a fourth if he plays in 51 percent of the plays this upcoming season, but the bears were not worried about the compensation. They thought they were doing right by the young man. They send them to Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Steelers say that he will back up Russell Wilson. Initially, we certainly know the talents 
that Justin Fields has. So that'll be an interesting quarterback situation in Pittsburgh. But the Bears had conversations with other teams, just never felt. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Shafty Shafterton yeah. uh, reporting on that. I was really surprised at the lack of compensation. Yeah, and you go back to even like Trey Lance. Yeah, the 49ers they, got more for Lance. They got more for Lance. Uh, they got more for Lance than 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 Fields, than uh, Pickett, than there's Mac, one, Jones. Mac Jones. Thank you. Um, and the fact that it was the Steelers, I mean, good for the Steelers because yeah. Russ Wilson might be a one at one and done. And I found myself wondering, you know, are other team people I'm interested in? I, 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 at first, I had forgotten things. I was incredibly surprised. Like, why? The Raiders, they, they're they going into the season, at least right now, with, with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew. You can't take a flyer on Justin flipping fields. And then I remembered they grabbed Luke Getze, who was a complete failure in Chicago mm-hmm. at offense, and Luke Getze. I just don't, man. I know it's fun to pick on the Raiders, you know, and friendly rivalry and all that. But deep down inside, like, I, I've always had a soft spot for the Raiders. And, uh... I think the I think the league is a better place when the Raiders are competing. Uh-huh. I just I don't you don't see them competing at all. Like I, it's not only that I don't see them competing. I just don't understand half the I just don't understand half the stuff they do. Like yeah. I'm if I'm a Raider fan, I'm looking at this next season. And by the way, can't wait to can't wait to hear Devontae Adams pop up, which is going right. to happen oh, yeah. here. I, I just I I already know barring miracles. And understanding that the NFL is is always that, well, I didn't expect them to compete. But we're sitting here on March 18th, and it's like, I don't I don't see the Raiders having any, any, like any anything other than a miracle shot at making the playoffs next year. Like going into the season, you're like, this is what we're doing. Oh, J- Jacobs is gone. Who even if they even if the whole thing is, well, they didn't want to get fields or anything like that because they're gonna pick a quarterback in the first. Okay. That's not going to help you next year. Right. Uh, you're going in with AOC and, and Gardner Minshew and God knows what, Devontae Adams and what. And defense, though, maybe Max Crosby adding a uh, Love Wilkins. Max Crosby. Yeah, defensive line. Love that. That The defense will definitely be the better part of that team next year, but this just smells like a 7-10, and 6-11 yeah. and 11 team. Again, rinse and repeat. I just I feel bad. Uh, we'll take a break. We're going to talk about March Madness today as well. The madness begins. What a weekend in college basketball. We're not going to pretend to know everything we're talking about. We're not going to treat you like you know what you're talking about. Let's let's just be honest. 98% of everybody just started paying attention to college basketball on Friday. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But we will talk about brackets and we will have bracket strategy and all that because that's all anybody cares about is the perceived gambling. So we'll take a break. When we come back, though, we've got audio Kings Knicks. In the meantime, I want to share something with you. And that's a message from my good friends at American Energy. Heating and air. Your second opinion partners. They paid for that. That's what you do. When you advertise with us, you get the occasional free jingle from the top of my head, y'all. A lot going on with American Energy right now. As always, your second opinion partner. Want to remind you that right now you can get a diagnostic on your system for nothing. What what does that mean? That means they'll come out to your house and you can get a diagnostic and they'll tell you what's going on for nothing. Nothing at all. It's a $99 value. Let, let them test your system, your connections, and all the moving parts to make sure it's functioning properly. properly think about that. It, they'll just come out to your house and be like, everything's working perfectly. Ooh, peace of mind. Great. Thank you. Or this is an issue. Get it before it breaks and it's super expensive for free. Like, for free. Obviously, the work's not going to be for free. But, hey, you're going to have to get that done anyways. Call today to schedule your appointment at 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. AmericanEnergyAir.com. American Energy. Making the uncomfortable comfortable. It's true. Kings lose to the Knicks. It was a fun game, though, for many. Curious to see how you guys feel about that game. We'll have uh, audio for you next. 
Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SackTownSports.com. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Folsom Lake Kia. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman in the KCRA3 Weather Center. Bright sunshine for Monday. Temperatures climbing into the low 70s with a light onshore breeze in the evening. Tuesday morning, we start in the upper 40s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA News and the KCRA app. Shop Folsom Lake Kia during their spring event and save big on your favorite models. You can even buy with zero down on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC. Starting March 18th for three days only, shop limited time doorbusters during Lowe's MVP's bonus days. Buy one Metabo HPT 15 degree roofing nailer. Get one box of Metabo HPT one and a quarter inch collated roofing nails free of $49.98 value. Plus, save $39 on a little giant A4 six foot 300 pound stepladder. Shop these deals and more while supplies last. Lowe's Nose Pros. Valid 318 through 320. Selection varies by location. Ew. Gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are going to function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by California Army National Guard, Major Wood Home Furnishings, and RVs of Sacramento. The sewer system. It's probably the last thing on your mind, and that's okay. Because at the Sacramento Area Sewer District, it's our first priority. As the region's largest sewer utility, we own and maintain thousands of miles of sewer pipe. And our job is to get to your sewer problem before it interrupts your life. So whether you've got a slow drain or a backup, call us first, day or night. The Sacramento Area Sewer District. It's a dirty job, but we're happy to do it. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. Call or text at 916-339-1140. On Sacktown Sports. Rush is one of those bands that, like, everyone whose music is like, Rush might be the greatest band ever. They're just phenomenal. Like, you never hear anybody like, Rush isn't a great band. But then I can't really get it. Like, I like Rush. Yeah. I have nothing bad to say about Rush, but I'm about to. I, no, I, I just I feel like it's everybody's favorite band's favorite band, but I don't. But I've I I can't find myself like obsessing on them. I've never like 
thrown on Russia's. Well, I have thrown on Russia's greatest hits, I guess, but it's not like a goat. Like, for example, I acknowledge that Rush is a better band than Creedence Clearwater Revival, mm -hmm. but I probably listen to CCR a hundred to one that I listen to Rush. It's it's kind of like Tool. Yeah. Everyone, oh my God, Tool, dude. Tool is like the tightest band ever. Like they're insane. And they're right. They're great. But like, when was the last time you threw on Tool? Never. That's what I'm saying. I've listened to more Alanis Morissette than I have Tool, and I'm admitting that out loud on a sports show. Isn't it ironic? <laughs> Don't you think? Um, here we go. You and I were talking during the break. <coughs> and we were talking about our friend Jim Les mm -hmm. and UC Davis. Yeah. They came so close. Mm -hmm. They were leading at the half. Long Beach State. Leading a lot of the second half. A lot of the second half. And it was close at the end. A um, couple of missed shots, a couple of this, that, whatever. And in the end, Long Beach State advances. I'll tell you what was screwing with me, though, because the King they kind of overlap with the Kings game, but I had, towards the end, I had the, the Davis game on. It was on ESPN, too. And they've got a guard. I don't know if anybody else did that. they got a guard. His name is Marcus Sahonis. And it screwed with me the whole time because it sounded like they were uh, saying Sabonis. Mm -hmm. And it was 100% not Sabonis. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Double. Uh, but uh yeah Sahonis. like yeah. the hell is that hi jr good morning hey, wow good morning. You're this, up is early. A, this is really early for you yeah someone's got to save the world that's a good point right a bet. yeah hey and and talking about that hey society that's what happens with society tells every children every child they're special that dude he's like the forest cup of the show just <laughs> dropping the Dropping the one liners have become t shirts. Dropping I mean, the truth. He's right, though. I mean, hey, look, <laughs> he, I, I can't disagree. Oh, my God. Hey, talking about Sabonis, how about uh, how about St. Mary's, the Gale? They oh. got a boy. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm trying to blank on a guy last name. I can't say these German last names. The guy that used to be the great king who played for the uh, Sonics. Uh, they got his, his son on there. Marshallonis. Marshallonis. Thank you, big. Of the big brain there. Yeah. Hey, SMC going all the way. Gales. You can tell that to Jordan Ford. Look up Delhi. I don't know what Delhi's doing these days. <laughs> Drinking but, Fosters. Uh, yeah. And and they drew, uh, they what they draw? Uh, Christy Canyons in the first round. So she's a hard out, but they should do okay against her. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Is that like yawns? Is I don't that, know. Maybe it was contagious. Is it, was it? Oh, did I just infect you with sneeze? Thank you, JR. Uh, thank you. Thank you, JR. Always good. Yeah. That's early for JR. That is. Let's uh let's get to this uh, Sacramento Kings game. Kings and Knicks, Jalen Brunson Wolf. There's a great Brunson shake and drive and he scores. That time he had Malik Here Monk it. leaning in the wrong direction and he converted. 15-13, Knicks on top by two. Is that a Rick Flair? Oh, you'll hear a lot more of it. Oh, God. Here's uh, more Jalen Whee! Brunson. <laughs> Brunson for three and he scores it. Knicks regain the lead. It's 34-33. Brunson now in double figures has 11. He averages 27 and a fraction per game. I can't not, unhear it, can you? I am 100% like we're two for two. I am only interested in Jalen Brunson highlights now. Is this going to be a woo every time? Knicks lead by one, 34-33. Brunson spins away from Davion. I'm not even going to complete the play-by-play. -play, just... Here's Brunson open left corner for three. He makes the Kings pay the. Dear God. Wait, was his mom again? sitting next to you, Jason? Seriously. Could that? It was. It. <sighs> Milwaukee's Damian Lillard, who ended up with 10 points on 2 of 12 shooting against D'Angelo Russell, who was 2 of 9. Here's a steal. Brunson, another 2 to his tally on the breakout. Here's Brunson now. Elbow extended, left side of the floor. Gives to Hartenstein to a cutting Brunson. Challenged at the rim. He's fouled and he scores. He had that time becoming a factor as this we hit the five minute. Me. And I'm doing and it. The Kings can ill afford to squander opportunities. Here's another three point attempt. Brunson knocks it down. I am so sad they scored any points. This New York defense just relentless, so physical. 
collapsing three defenders around Sabonis and forcing them into the turnover. Turnover number 12 by Sacramento. Can they get another defensive stop? They're going to have to. Oh, 45 turnover. seconds to go in this one. Brunson calmly across the midcourt line. Now drives to the right, wiggles to the left, floaters up, gets in. 40-point game for Jalen Brunson. Knicks lead 96-91. You ever take a balloon and stretch the neck and just let the air squeak out? That's what it was. That's 100% what it was. All right. you now you can't unhear it. I can't, and I'm sorry, sorry for doing that to everybody, but, you know, that's just how we are. You know the answer to this probably. Chris, I'm going to play the final call. Is it going to be like a constant wooing, like fairly constant wooing, or over, under, on woos in this 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 final call? Uh, I think it's going to be a woo. <laughs> just like just like a oh, copy one, of but wood. then a, yeah. a breath yeah. and then a little bit more. I think he's right. Let's find out. The New York <laughs> Knicks come into Sacramento and they win for the fourth time in five games. The final score is 98-91. For the eighth time this season, Sacramento held under 100 points. Jesus, I didn't even catch that man on the TV. Well, it would have been up high. I, like, right how bad radio. do you want to throw a hot dog? <laughs> I mean, more than a hot dog. I mean, this is the thing, and this sucks. Like, I fully acknowledge. I fully acknowledge. Like, don't get all persnickety. Hey, why are we getting on her? She's a fan, and she's she's expressing her fanness she's cheering like yeah. come on well, you know would you rather have a, a house full of uh you know a, a arena full of you know polite clapping like and oh by the way it's the road team like yeah. she is showing out for her team yeah. and letting it be known and making like i get it and that's probably the correct take but my god it's just so annoying though and and i would have the same energy for a kings fan I promise you I would. If that was a Kings fan, like we'd have there there'd have to be we'd have to like plant something on that person yeah. and get him banned. Like, oh. <laughs> or huh? They do that in our house. We do that in their house. We have to we'd have to find someone with the woo ability. Yeah. I mean Jet Blue's got cheap flights out there. Yes. <laughs> find get him get him a, how funny would that be if we See, this is where old radio promotions worked. We would have like a woo contest. Yeah. And then send the person out to New York to go to visiting radio. The winner gets or, uh, yeah, home radio. Exactly. The winner gets flights there and back, hotel, tickets to MSG for the game. We get those tickets right behind radio. And you have to woo. And you've got to woo the whole time. And then we get a hold. Of the audio, and we play that on yeah, the. Oh my! See how they did? That would be such a wonderful promotion. It would be Simone. <laughs> um, yes, two games in a row. We had the stand, the stander, the stander, which was a Kings fan, a Kings fan, and was. I mean, didn't make any. It was fine. Just stood, and then this one was the. We have the wooer, the wooer. This whole segment, I just want to compliment myself for being mature because in our household, our terms when the kids were really little for the private parts were peanut and woo yeah and so when i'm saying this whole time you know the woo lady and internally i'm yeah, laughing that was a battle I, that was a big battle yeah. not to do that well 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 that was not analysis that was just simply going over what i i did not know until i walked in today and you told me yeah that uh, i didn't remember until i i tried to uh, put that away but then you played the first oh highlight and God. oh man i forgot about that there's just got to be a montage yeah of wooing and you know you can't do like literally you can't do anything and it was like oh if the kings can win i literally am going to take the headsets off and go yeah Woo! oh my god how Please. great would that <laughs> how great would that be just everybody chasing this person down the concourse, <laughs> wooing at the at the wooing respectfully. Yes, wooing. Oh, woo, yeah. Yes, respectful woos. Yes, of course. We'll go around the NFL next. Uh, also, uh, a little bit of golf, a little bit of soccer over the weekend locally. Goal, goal, and uh, Justin Fields to the Steelers. Why? I'll figure it out next. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything: a Pacific Division title, GM of the Year, Coach of the Year. 
Clutch Player of the Year, All-Stars and All-NBA Performers. Plus, we got to light the beat. Here's a steal by Fox, a breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the Bean team, Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. At Ashton or Price, over the last 25 years, we've won just about every injury case you can think of. Slip and fall, falling merchandise, fell through rotted decking, we won those. Dangerous stairs, falls into holes, dog bites, won them. Injured while pedestrian or on a bicycle, auto, motorcycle, big rig, company vehicle, Uber, or Lyft accident, we've won them all. And the best news is there's no fee until you win. So no matter how you got injured, remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my hiding spots. Ha! Found ya. How? That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action, that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com and please remember to gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Everyday Cintas service reps help businesses get ready for the workday. They provide freshly laundered workwear delivered every week. Mats, mops, restroom, and cleaning supplies. First aid and safety products to help your employees stay safe. They even test and inspect fire extinguishers and emergency lights. Cintas helps keep your business running smoothly. See what Cintas can do for you. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Ooh, ma. What was that? That is business phone bliss with the UMA cloud phone system. It handles all our voice, video, and messaging needs. You sound very calm. I am. UMA has everything I need to run my business more efficiently, like virtual receptionist, call routing, and video conferencing. And it starts at just $19.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. UMA. Nice. Find your business calm at UMA.com slash radio. you up with the best in local sports. They just make it interesting, you know? It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. On Sacktown Sports. Great conversation going on on social media, which is rare. If uh, Die Hard's Christmas movie is the Fugitive of St. Patrick's Day movie. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. No. No? It doesn't have anything to do with St. Patrick's What are you talking about? He gets lost in the parade. He gets lost in the parade. It just happens to take place during St. Patrick's Day. Like Die Hard. No. No. Die Hard has a Christmas. Like, Die Hard 2 is what you're comparing it to. I agree with that. Uh-huh. Die Hard 2 takes place during Christmas, but it's not a Christmas movie. Why is Die Hard 1 a Christmas movie, then? Because it has the themes of a Christmas movie. The Explosions themes. and Barabons? Oh, so Home Alone isn't a... Uh... Home Alone is a... I mean, that's you know, all Christmassy. They're doing all Christmas stuff. Yeah. Guy travels cross-country to connect back with his family, gets stopped along the way, and finds that the true love is... Is Christmas. That that was Die Hard. The true love is Christmas. Yeah. I'm with you on the fugitive. Yeah. He great has the movie. little green hat. Yeah. And then he puts it away to yeah. disappear in the crowd. Right. Uh, also, this out. Uh, you talked your research. <laughs> See, they're Provasic. Provasic. Dr. Charles Nichols. Richard. Richard. <laughs> I know. My good friend, Dr. Richard Campbell. That's like the worst accent <laughs> in the world. Um, this just in from the Giants. After 24 seasons, the Giants and Rennell Brooks Moon jointly announced that she will not, uh, not be returning to the Giants uh, PA booth hmm. during this season and will be assuming the role of public address announcer emeritus. Okay, so first off, as a okay. Giants fan, like, 
synonymous, right? What a wonderful 24, 24 years is pretty dope. Also, when you consider that's the voice since the start of Oracle Park, mm -hmm. like that's awesome. So I, I don't, I don't want anything, <laughs> not what I'm about to be saying to be construed as uh, being uh, trying to make this trivial or uh, 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 anything but massive respect. What a, what a wonderful career. I just thought this was really interesting in a official. This is the giant statements, right? First off, what is a PA announcer emeritus? Do they come back and just occasionally PA? I don't know. No, whatever. Although they discussed an extension of Brooks Moon's contract, which ended in December of 2023, after extensive discussions, they mutually and amicably agreed to part ways. Is it just me? Like, that's a weird line to put in there. Like, what? okay, first off, why? Right. What is the point of that? Just retiring or mm -hmm. stepping away or doing a, what, you And what are the extensions, extensive negotiations? Like, their reps and their reps together. And like, okay, I'm going to need, like, I'm just trying to uh, imagine what public address announcer extended negotiations look like. And then why the Giants, who are just such a weird franchise, man? Why do you need to put that in the bye bye statement you're putting out? Yeah. Just struck me as a it's weird. A bit odd. Yeah. Uh, also a bit odd that Justin Fields is going to the Steelers. Very much so. For a what that surprised me. Conditional six round pick. It surprised me in the order of it, right? If this news was two weeks ago before Russell Wilson went there, you're like, this makes sense. Pittsburgh had talked about him. Mm -hmm. They needed quarterback. Fields has been a starter. There's a lot of potential there. That would have made sense. But now you get Russell Wilson, and then you add Fields. That was now it didn't cost him much. I love it for the Steelers. Yeah, you get a you get a a a, a shot. Yeah, you know, the, there's no doubt that Justin Fields has talent, and I would also put out there that he was playing for the Bears. Yeah, who between Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze might have the worst coach offensive coordinator battery yeah. in the NFL last year, which by the way, gets, he's now with the Raiders. Um, so there is a chance that, Oh, well he was playing for crap. Right. And now he's going to go and, and look, if you're going to get developed, get developed with the Steelers. Sure. Sort yeah. of. It's so amazing to me how quickly this has changed. Remember Dave, there was a time where if you did draft a rookie quarterback, you ideally like to have them rest or wait mm -hmm. a year or two. Now it's too much pressure. Now you got to start them. Now it's not only do you start them, they move on. Like teams draft these guys and uh, no, not our guy. We're nope, moving on. We're done after three years. Like this whole thing is just really sped up the clock for all these organizations. He got 40 games, uh, 2,500 yards, 16 touchdowns, nine picks. I remember last off season, like what well, wasn't quite now. It had been more towards the summer of last year. He was one of the, most talked about MVP candidates, which I was stunned by. I'm like, he was why? everyone's sleeper MVP. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm like, I, I think he might be good, but MVP, MVP what are we talking candidate. about? And then he gets traded that end of that year yeah. for a conditional six rounder to most likely be a backup, right? Yes. And to be clear, a conditional six rounder is basically we have to legally give you something, <laughs> right? Can't make it look like it's for nothing. It continues the one of the craziest weirdest I, I it's been going on too long to call it a coincidence but you want to talk about a streak you know like the spurs have had like one coach in forever the steelers have had three coaches in forever there is one thing that is 100 percent certain until it's not the bears have no idea what to do with quarterbacks and if it wasn't for C.J. Stroud, who is the one guy, yeah, we remember we had this conversation on draft day, and even though there's no real logic to saying it, it's kind of like when I when I talk about FSU basketball players, but for some reason Ohio State can't produce NFL worthy quarterbacks for such a perennially successful college, and the Bears are even worse than Ohio State because at least again Ohio State has C.J. Stroud now. The Bears are worse, Jason. Since 1982, when they had Jim McMahon, who, by the way, was not that. I mean, we talked about with Sean okay. Salisbury. He was he was fine. That's not why the Bears won yeah, the title. He's just a winner. Mike Tomzak, Jim Harbaugh, Steve Walsh, 
Eric Kramer, Dave Craig, Eric Kramer again, Shane Matthews, Cade McNown, Jim Miller, Cordell Stewart, who was good with the Steelers, Mm -hmm. Craig Krenzel, Jonathan Quinn, Kyle Orton, Rex Grossman, at least got new Super Bowl, Jay Cutler, who, by the way, is the the best one on this list. Matt Barkley, Luke McCown, or Josh McCown, sorry. Wait, did Josh go to UCLA? That was Luke. No, it was Cade. It was Cade. Oh, wow. A lot of McCown. McNown. McNown, not McCown? Yeah. See? Matt Barkley, Mitch Trubisky. Mitch. Justin Fields. Yeah. And now. How terrible is that? Yeah. And now, number one, I mean, good luck, Caleb. I mean, if I'm Caleb Williams, I'm 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 pulling a, a Eli. I'm like I, I'm not. Don't pick me. I'm not. I'm not going to play for you. I promise you, I will not play for you. Like it's not going to happen. Do not pick me. Trade the pick or what? Don't pick me. I'm not playing for this franchise. You guys suck at quarterbacks. I you draft me and my career is already over. Like it's not going to happen. How is it that how bad are you as a franchise when you make the Broncos look smart at quarterbacks? <laughs> at least the Broncos have had had, had Elway and Manning in a couple right. of but geez. Uh real quick, nice road win for the Republic. Mm-hmm. They they win one nil. Should have been two nil, but they, they take it. Holding off sides, yeah, in Miami. And uh Scotty Scheffler, uh world number one, got his putter back. The players was great. Such a great TV tournament. The game too. of golf. golf. He now becomes the first golfer, not Tiger, not Jack, n- none of them. The first golfer in the history of the Players' Championship to repeat. How about that? Yeah. And he won last week. First player since, I think, Tiger Woods in 07. Could be wrong, but I feel like I read that this morning. Uh, to win two tournaments in a row. It's so hard to win a tournament on the PGA it Tour. Is. He won two in a row. He wins the players two years in a row. Had to come back. Xander Schauffele, uh, and a couple others were uh, a Wyndham, Wyndham Clark, Clark, which is the, the butt, yeah. what a golfy name. Yes, Wyndham Clark. Hey, hey Wyndham. Hello. You know, have you ever met anyone or known of anyone named Wyndham? No. Yes. You have. Mm-hmm. Like He's a wrestler. Real. Is that his real name though? His, I believe it was his uncle's last name. What is uh, the wrestler's name, real quick? Wyndham Rotunda unfortunately no longer with us oh um, well okay well sorry. thoughts and prayers and you know all, you know of course did not know that when um i know we got a break rotunda yeah when the, why is bray wyatt come up? that was his wrestling name oh i see what you're saying but his, yeah windham w-i-n-d-h-a-m windham lawrence rotunda can i just say i know that's kind of weird because he passed away i don't mean any disrespect but like Wyndham Rotunda is a pretty dope wrestling yes. name. <laughs> Why did he just go with that? Because then the WWE wouldn't own it. What happened? He wasn't very old, was he? No. Uh, was he, he heart, were, oh, it was a heart problem. thing. 36. Oh, man. Is there... Do, do, I know we got to go. I, I'm asking this as like a child asking innocent questions. I don't have an agenda here. Hey, I'm going to give Dave the leeway. Oh. Don't any wrestling fans make fun of Dave. Thank you. Like, has there ever been, like, a deep dive on, like, and I'm not saying that's connected, but, like, has there ever been a deep dive on, like, PED and steroid use and wrestling and, like, health? And it seems like a lot of wrestlers, man. They, that used to be a problem, like, way back in the day. Do they test? Elite, huh? To they your, do test they, now. They do? Is yeah. it like, but do they? Or do you, are you confident? They, uh, okay. it's like <laughs> they've got, like, a third-party system that they say. Because I would think that that's a prime thing to be roided up for. Like you're so you're so much so much about the physicality, the looks, the the whole thing, your body. Well, when you hear about the older wrestlers, it's like you take something to get up, right? You take right. something to get down, right? Then something for the pain. That's what I'm saying. And then doing it all over the next day. That was more of like the 80s and 90s. So you think they've cleaned it up a bit? Oh, and, a bunch. And they test. Yes. Man, that's a that's a you know, you know, course wrestling's fake. We all know that, but it's. Sorry, spoiler alert. But, like, one thing you can't say is that they're not athletes and that they're right. not, like, hammering their bodies yeah, throughout exactly. the whole thing. That Yeah, 36 years old. Jeez, Louise. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we got Memphis tonight. But let's, let's go back to that next game, Jalen Brunson. And uh, 
yeah uh just the atmosphere we'll, we'll we we spend a whole segment on woo lady <laughs> uh or woo lady confirmed or could it be woo man it was, lady. it was Woo Lady. Okay, so Woo Lady, but uh, let's Lady. Uh, Woo well, Lady. Yeah. Was, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about Jalen Brunson and the rest of that team next. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys live Monday through Friday from six to six. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com/slash Sacktown Sports. For more than half a century, contractors and trade professionals have relied on WeatherGuard for heavy-duty truck and van storage equipment, not just to protect their valuable tools, but to protect their professional reputations. For pros, the WeatherGuard badge makes a statement about what drives them. It says, bring it on, been there, done that, we've got your back, without saying a word. And the folks at WeatherGuard, they're just as driven as the hardworking pros they serve. See what it means to be driven at WeatherGuard.com. The Amish have a reputation for craftsmanship, determination, and quality. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. You know, those virtues sound quite similar to the Keys family and the day-to-day -day values on display at Naturewood. The Amish furniture craftsmanship begins with the finest hardwood, shaping and molding the raw materials into one-of-a-kind art. In addition to the classic styles long sought and revered by discriminating furniture lovers, Naturewood Home Furnishings offers a vast selection that includes transitional, modern, farmhouse, arts and crafts, and other stunning styles all available in the ultimate Amish standard of excellence built over centuries. All Naturewood Amish furniture is on sale right now for a limited time. Let the Naturewood team guide you through their selection of Amish furniture that will be with you forever. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle Draper here from Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. If you're an entrepreneur with a vehicle fleet, I'll tell you that outfitting your van fleet with Mercedes-Benz vans is a very smart business move. Here's why. If you use it for business, you'll likely qualify for substantial tax breaks. Plus, they're rugged, sophisticated cargo haulers that you will love driving. You'll also love the way these things look with your company logo on them. And finally, it is Mercedes Madness season. That's right. Rates are available starting at 4 4.9% APR. Choose from any of 60 vans available right now at Mercedes-Benz of Stockton's Commercial Fleet Center next to their stunning new showroom. These folks wrote the book on what true customer service looks like. I'm a car and truck enthusiast, and I mean it when I tell you that the customer service you can expect at Mercedes-Benz of Stockton is the best. Go see their beautiful new Mercedes showroom just a half hour from SAC, right off I-5, online as well at mbfstockton.com. If your passion is bass fishing, only one radio show has the action, information, and excitement of your favorite outdoor sport. Ultimate Bass, hosted by tournament bass pro and California Outdoor Hall of Famer Kent Brown, takes you live to where the fish are biting every Saturday morning. Only Ultimate Bass feeds your passion with the latest news, products, tips, and advice from the pros. Ultimate Bass with Kent Brown, Saturday mornings at 5 a.m. on Sacktown Sports 1140, part of SEP's Saturday Morning Outdoors. Capital Casino conveniently located on 411 at North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. From the power business technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Francisco! Sacktown Sports. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song, and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone. And then boom. With Jason Ross. No, he did it. Yes, he did. Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. Comes back quickly. You know, Tank doubles to Sabonis right down the gut. Reaches with the right hand, scores it, and he's fouled. Much to the dismay of Tom Thibodeau. Whatever, Tibbs. Whatever, dude. I love this game. I loved it. I loved it. What a 
what a cool test uh, for the Kings. And I was so m- mad when they lost. Mainly, I didn't like the way the refs operated, especially in the fourth. Also, I really wanted this win because it was so physical. So, such a cool matchup. Yeah. I just wanted this win a little more. Um, but no, nowhere, none of, none of, and the Kings weren't perfect. Not by long shot. By far. But, like, none of the same, nothing close to the anger I've had at losses. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, this was not, they didn't show up, or the Bulls, or the, you know, the Knicks are a very good team. And I thought the Kings played their asses off. Yeah. I mean, look, there's always how do you look at things? You could, hey, it's a loss. It's a loss. Doesn't matter. You couldn't beat them in your building. We could go down that road. Yeah. Um, the way I took this game was I would say it was played 100% in the Knicks style. Yes. Um, the Kings shot horrifically, and they really had a decent chance to win the game. They did. So uh, the Knicks were physical, and Brunson had nearly the highest point total against any by against anybody by the Kings this year or against you know an opponent I should say from the Kings. Um, so you have all that. Yeah. And the Kings are up four with seven minutes to go. They're down three with uh, three straight possessions going for the a tie, and they missed late. So um, they had their chances. They really did. They did. They had their chances. Still shot eighty one percent from the line. Yeah, and you mentioned your stat earlier was it's the first time in what seventeen games? Yeah, this yeah, and seventeen straight in a row. So this is the first time in eighteen games that they have outscored the opponent at the line. Twenty one of twenty six versus the Knicks thirteen of sixteen. Uh, neither team shot well. The Knicks twenty eight percent from behind the arc, twenty seven for the Kings, thirty five percent overall. Is that a season low? It's got to be close. Uh, it was close. It wasn't quite the low. So if it was like the, the other thing I took away from that is in earlier in the year, if they shot like that, they're losing that game. And yes, by fifteen or so. And the weird thing about this game was when the Kings got up four, it felt like fifteen. Yes, it did. And when the Knicks were up nine, it felt like thirty. Yes, it's it, like yes. I don't even know if they can. Ca- there was no double digit leads in the game. No lead changes and ties. It was just back and forth. And and honestly, I look back, Dave, when they were up four, there was two possessions in a row. The one, and I don't know if you'll remember this, but the Kings were up four, got a stop, and I think it was Keon on like a fast break, but kind of congestion was there, and he went for the layup, missed. Monk came crashing in for the dunk, and it goes out. He missed it. Yeah. Um, Knicks miss. Kings come back the other end. Fox tries a layup, and he misses. Knicks get it again. Bogdanovich hits a three, and it's down to one. And it's like if they had scored any of those, again, it's only six. Yeah. But I think Tibbs calls the timeout. Brunson was on the bench. It just felt like it would have changed the dynamics of the game. But those things happen. I mean, the Knicks are tough to score on. They're, they're just feisty. They're physical. And I think – you know, Tibbs' philosophy is just foul, and they're not going to call all of them. I think if it's the same segment you're – I think it's the same segment of the game you're referring to. Considering Brunson had 42 of the 98 points the Knicks scored, yeah. I want to say the Knicks came back and either tied or took the lead with him on the bench in yeah. that stretch, yeah. and, and that was really, I think, that what was did it. You had to – you had to capitalize yeah. there with Brunson on the bench. Um, I would say, honestly, our preview of this game on Friday was about as spot on as we've ever done. This is a tough matchup. It's a physical matchup. Hartenstein versus Sabonis mm-hmm. is going to be tough. The Kings out offensive rebounded the Knicks by, by I think, one. Yeah, it was 11 to 10. But the Knicks had 11 more defensive rebounds. And it just seemed any time the Kings missed. Yeah. There were four Knicks crashing the board. Yeah. And it was, it, you talked about the officials again, not why the Kings lost, not by any means. Knicks might go, hey, look, they got more free throws. Um, the the play that I found amusing, and this is where I think it's really difficult to be an official, so maybe I'm standing in front of him here. There was a 50-50 ball clearly between Malik Monk and Dante DiVincenzo. Yes. And they both went for the same effort, yep. and it was a pretty violent collision. Yep. And they chose to call the foul on Malik Monk. Yes. Like, oh, man, that's a tough call. That's a tough call. But, but the... Was it two minutes later, three minutes later, if same that. type of play? Yeah. Uh, refs were confused. It was Malik, and I can't remember who he bumped into. They're not as the same kind of collision. But, it was Hart, but I could be wrong. Okay, and right. then right away, confusion, let's call jump ball. Yes. And then as soon as Tibbs did the review, I'm like, that's a smart challenge. 100%. Because they did not call a foul. And they can't do anything about that on replay. Yeah, so what they're now looking at is who touched it last. Oh, clearly It was Malik clearly Malik, it. but there was a foul right before it. And they can't change that. And I'm watching the game, and Malik – 
ends up in the stands oh, in one of the he's seats. Stewing. He's stewing. Yeah. And it's funny, the guy he ended up next to is uh King's co owner Chris Kelly, yeah. who is the I believe the founding uh general counsel for Facebook. Uh, big time lawyer, right? Yeah. And I'm like, Chris, Ask, help take out. care of things yeah. here. You're the you're the lead negotiator, pal. Talk to the referees. Yeah. That didn't work out. It was too bad. So they're zero for two on that again. Not the reason they lost. No, it those wasn't. are tough. Like Malik's effort is fine. Yes, you're just on the wrong end of that. And and the the I'll say this, but I want to expand on what I'm saying because it's not what I would normally mean by saying this. I believe the refereeing crew decided the game, but this not in a corrupt way. I think had you had a different crew that called this game as games normally get called, I think the Kings win this game. This was a very Nick friendly, and I don't mean that again. I don't mean that as they you mean that they allowed the physical. Play. Yes, yeah. and a lot of that. Another crew is probably right away, hey, we're going to establish and take control of this thing. We're not letting them play crazy. And I I like to play on more yeah. often than not. I do. But as the game went on, look, basketball players, in a basketball game, it's almost like kids. Like, they're going to test boundaries. And they kept testing and testing and testing, and the refs kept letting them play and play and play. And pretty soon it's like, oh, my God. It's one of those things where, uh, and we'll use this analogy again, a Hail Mary in football. 98% of Hail Marys in football, there is pass interference in the end zone by the letter of the law, but it's this unwritten rule that unless you grab a guy's face mask and suplex him, they're never going to call. Do you, do you remember even seeing P.I. get called on a Hail Mary? I, I don't either. I'm yeah. sure it's happened. I don't ever remember it. We all know there's plenty of pe- pass interference by the rule on that play. If it's a if it's a regular old part of the game and that's a 20-yard pass third in the end zone and half that crap is pulled, yeah. pass interference. Right. So. And that in the, it was a similar thing Saturday where by the letter of the law, the refs missed about 30 fouls. Yeah, but they let him go. And if you know that, then you play that way. I think it was early on. Yeah, it was first quarter yes. where Hartenstein basically, I mean, he grabbed and then pulled down. I mean, and it was pulled on the ref side. Down. You could see the hook. Like sometimes you go, oh, it was on the opposite side. The ref couldn't see that. That was. The, are you talking about the jump ball where uh, Hartenstein had the one hand on it and was hooking him? Yeah, and yeah. Then, like literally – tackled him yes and they just let they that completely it. go and that's like, a foul yeah it is but it's like okay that's fine to your point like they let that go right. so hey i'm not saying you know clothesline people but you've got more of a freedom looks like there's a longer leash today and so i think if you don't take hey the refs won the game for the knicks if you take don't take that out of context that refereeing crew did win the game for the knicks in the sense that they refed to a knicks style mm-hmm. of play yeah had a different crew come in and ref to a Kings or most of the rest of the league style. Yeah. Two or three of those Knicks players are either fouling out or have to completely change the way they play advantage Sacramento. And now all of a sudden we're off to the races. And I got to wonder, is that some sort of league thing where they're like, look, the rules are a little wonky. Yeah. Well, they've they've addressed that about it. Yeah. So they're trying to, you know, decrease you know, decrease scoring maybe a little bit. I have a problem with that because I do that in season. You can't do that in season. You, I don't necessarily have an issue with them bringing it up and talking about it and mandating stuff over the summer. But what I do have a problem with is you shouldn't have a, a foul should not be not a foul or called a foul based on who you're playing. Yeah. Whether it's based on, the player you're playing, which we see a lot, like, oh, this guy gets all the calls. This guy never gets a call. Like, you look at the calls like uh, James Harden gets mm-hmm. versus the calls that DeMontis Sabonis doesn't get. And to be fair, by the way, Domas also gets away with a lot of initial contact. Yeah. A lot of initial contact that refs could call an offensive foul. But I, I, I just, I don't like the idea of, okay, if I'm playing uh, Phoenix, the referees are going to call a different game than if I'm playing New York. The rules right. are the rules. Right. A foul is a foul. Leave it alone. But that's that was not the case. Uh, look, maybe they meet again in the finals. That'd be great. Yeah, I, I, I'd be for that. Um, the atmosphere was, you talked about that earlier, the atmosphere other than Woo Lady was absolutely <laughs> was amazing. Um, didn't like Sabonis being scoreless in the fourth. It happens. It's not like he had a bad game. 
but he's still paying the price for the whole Kevon Looney thing last year when people conveniently leave out. He had a broken hand. Um, but in 40 minutes, he was the King's best player on the floor. De'Aaron had 29 and seven. Let's not look past that uh, on five and 19 shooting. Domas, even in that situation, nine of 16, made his three, uh, did not have the assist normally does, just two, uh, but 21 points uh, and 14 rebounds. But yeah, it, it just was a, uh, I wanted that game so bad. Yeah. I mean, there was one 30 point quarter for either team. Yeah. One. One. And Kings that was have the Kings 40 point quarters. That was um, the and next I think the, the second. Yeah. And I think the Kings were two of 17 at one point in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's just, they weren't knocking down shots, whether it was tired legs, physical play, whatever it was. Uh, 23 to 17, the Knicks in the fourth. Yeah. The Kings were held to 22, 26, 26. And 17. We'll take a break. When we come back, three for badness brought to you by Firewings. Don't forget, we still have the Jiffy Loop drive in the game. We'll also give away tickets to Jeff Lynn's ELO coming to Golden One Center here October 23rd. So you have plenty of time to plan something to do right before Halloween, week before Halloween. That's nice. Uh, the Steelers, what the heck are they doing? It's bracket time, and how concerned should we be about Trey Lyles? There's a preview. Three for Madness next. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum full synthetic oil change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum full synthetic oil change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil changes visit jiffylube.com for more details and valuable coupons today all guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline Folsom Lake Honda your one-stop Honda shop three questions three answers it's three for madness on the Carmichael Dave show with Jason Ross here's question one Yeah. Uh, Eric Hasseltine, voice of the Memphis Grizzle Ease. Uh, he'll be on with us about an hour, 827. In the meantime, Firewings brings you three for madness, which is also brought to you by Christopher Log. Question one. Who will start at QB for the Pittsburgh Steelers in week one? Well, they say it'll be Russell Wilson and that Justin Fields will back him up. Does that what? feel political at all? I mean, like, why is that? Why is that decided? I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And look, I think Mike Tomlin is one of the best coaches in the game. Um, and maybe the overall thing is, hey, and I get this. Justin, welcome in. You're yeah. with the Steelers now. Yeah. This is how we do things. We're going to resurrect your career. Yeah. This is going to be your team. This is going to be your team. You have, uh, you, we believe you were dropped into a bad situation. No offense, but with bad people around you. Uh, guess what? We are going, you're basically getting a year off, not a year off, but like, we're going to let Russ start and we want you carrying a clipboard and watching and we're going to work with you nonstop because we're having, we got Russ for a year. He's going to do the thing, but you're our quarterback of the future. And we intend on having you for the long term. Like I get it, but also it's like, uh, okay, we got Russ for like a dollar because mm -hmm. the Broncos are paying him. So how about this? How about everybody comes into camp and whoever has the best camp earns the spot? Yeah, they kind of got both for a dollar. Yeah, it really re really good deal for them. Yeah. I mean, they got like it's the Brock Purdy thing. Yeah, you know, like good for you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, 
Wilson has had obviously a better career. There's no, there's no debating that, but the last couple, I, I think they maybe are, are similar quarterbacks. So to me, I think it would be an, should be an open competition now politically or name and, and whatever, maybe there's more to starting Russell Wilson, but I think you play the best guy. I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. The only thing that be a bad you, look if it's not Wes, uh, Wilson, though. I agree. Well, that I really agree with you there. Or good he, on fields. The only it's so weird. Like I would be so much more um, passionately against this. The only thing holding me up is I just have so much respect for Mike Tomlin. Like Tomlin knows what he's passionately doing. against what? Just the idea I, of two QBs like this? Yeah, I know the idea of already declaring a oh, starter right, right. this this much in advance. Like yeah. guys, no, the yeah. best QB in camp. But it's Mike Tomlin, yeah. and let's let's have that conversation the first time Mike Tomlin team finishes below five hundred, right? Which uh, hasn't happened has yet. not happened yet. Number two, please. Question two. Be honest. Okay. You fill out your brackets. Yeah. Are you just guessing? No. Uh, and we're gonna have Bobby Gerald on. Yeah. To. If you guys want, you know, everyone right now is doing all their studying. Does it help? To, uh, huh? Does it help? The studying? Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll just, I, I can just only share my personal methods. Um, I watch almost no college basketball during the year. A little Florida State here, maybe a game, you know, there's a Duke, whatever. Um, But then when March Madness hits, here's what I do. I spend a lot, the very first things I go by, this is the time of the year more than any that I am all over the Vegas odds. That's mm. all I'm doing is and the, the 90% of my prep is odds because I know that whether it's a first round matchup or a fourth round matchup, these guys have to do the, these are the guys that are, have watched every minute of yeah. UAB. Right. So when I look and I see, okay, so all the one seeds are like, you know, like UConn's the big favorite, okay, and then Houston worries me that Houston like got blown out in their conference championship, but then North Carolina is like the sixth most, like they're the one one seed that's like down the list. So it's like, okay, is that one of those like they're a weak one seed? They're not going to do it, or are they going to do that thing that North Carolina does every like five years and just North Carolina in? Right. Um, so I spent a lot of time on that. And then I just go in and I just, I have two brackets. One where I'm like, don't overthink dude. Yeah. Pick a couple of first round upsets, but end up with a one, or but two end up with, yeah, I'm going to exactly. I'm going to have at best a three in, in, in the, yeah. in the final four. Generally it's going to be ones or twos. And then I'll have a second bracket where I'm like, okay, this here's, here's a 12, five, here's a four thirteen. All right. This, 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 um, and then that's it. And yeah. I think that's probably what a lot of people do. It's funny. I know like it, over the years, they say like the final four total number usually adds up to less than 10. So like if you have four, one seeds, that's uh, like yeah, four. four last year was 26. Was it, it was really? ridiculous? Who was this? It was like San Diego state, yeah, Florida right. Atlantic, UConn. That's who right. Won it all. And that's there was right. another team I'm, I'm missing. Uh, maybe Miami or something like that. Um, so it was just a crazy high number. Uh, we've seen, you know, last year we had a 16 beat a one, only the second time ever. We had St. Pete's two years ago, I think, in the round of eight or something like that as a 15 seed. I feel like we're in a time where it's changing. God, you're right. Miami, UConn, Florida, Atlantic, San Diego. You State. know what? I had zero Final Four. <laughs> zero. And I don't know if last year's the outlier or not, but all the ones obviously are favored. Um my pr I watch less college basketball this year than, than any other year. And what I'll generally do, Dave, what happens is maybe there'll be, and I think this might have been someone to know, maybe it was back in January or February, um, and might have been Sports Center or something, or saw something on the weekend that said, Wow, UConn goes down, they lose to Creighton, and Creighton beat them like kind of comfortably or by a few points. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, I just like in my mind, store uh, that. Oh, I'm gonna have Creighton go far, and just. For for no other reason than there was one game during the year where they beat UConn, right? And then the bracket comes out. I'm like, I don't know how far I'm having to have You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you just hear little things during the year. But um, basically, a lot of my stuff is hearing what the other people say. Like, watch out for McNeese. Right. Watch out for this team. Um, 
who are the Dukes? James Madison. They really could. They could go two rounds. Oh, really? James Madison. Like, well, they have thirty wins, thirty-one wins, maybe. Oh, they're great. Well, I don't know. Can they win? And you know that happens every year, yeah. where it's like some rando, like and the the Jitney State yeah. Furbies advance. Well, sure, what was it? Fairly Dickinson, a sixteen yes. beat number one Purdue in the first round, and. What was it? Virginia was one seed that lost. And then up till then, no and one. And then the next year won it. Yeah. No one seed. By the way, I'm looking at UConn's run last year. Dude, they didn't even have a close game. And everybody thinks they're clearly the best team. UConn, like, just owns the tournament, don't yeah. they? Like, I mean, there's teams that have won more, but I, I just feel like if yeah. UConn's good, they win it. People are talking about Duke and Carolina. Can t- UConn's won a lot. UConn has won a lot. All right, a lot more on that. Number three, please. Question three. How concerned should we be about the Trey Lyles injury? I was a little bothered. They said two weeks. Yeah. MCL sprain. They reevaluated yeah. in two weeks. Yikes. He would have helped Saturday. Would have helped a lot on Saturday. He really would have helped a lot. That was a big miss. That's that's a Trey Lyles type of game. He's physical. He's not. Honestly, I think Trey Lyles would have mixed it up. I, I, I Really? Maybe the biggest surprise from Saturday's game is that there were no fracases. Yeah. That 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 is a when refs let you play like that at some point someone's someone's getting up there. And honestly, look, I don't I'm not condoning violence, not want anybody swinging on anyone, but I, I not going to lie. Part of me was like swing away. Could somebody shove somebody into the third yeah. row and send a message something like that? Like let's go. I, I just don't really think that's in the King's DNA, yeah. but it, but it's in Trey's. Not that he's a dirty player, right. but he will let you know. Yeah, I'm concerned. Uh, it, it, I'm not concerned in the sense that it sounds like they'll obviously have him ready to go for the play that's slash play and run. Yeah, but boy, it'd be nice to have him down the stretch. Yeah, and you really hope before they take off for the the East Coast. I think what three gamer, four gamer, yeah, three, uh, three. Um, you know, Memphis has 97 players out again tonight. We all know what that means. Um, I, I, I really hope that they put that baby to bed. They should come out and just, you play like you did against the Knicks. You're going to win this game by 25. Like legitimately, if you play with that same intensity, you played against the Knicks. It's going to be like playing 48 minutes with bricks on your feet and then taking them off. And that offense should be wide open tonight. Uh, I know this is about Trey Lyles, but they should still be able to take care of a lot of business without him the way the schedule's laid out. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think he's an important piece. They'll miss him. He hasn't had the the year that maybe he did last year, but still could be there when they need him most at the end of the season and certainly uh, come playoff time if they make it there. We'll get back to brackets a little bit. Uh, as the tournament starts this week, are your brackets ready? We should do a show bracket. Mm. I say that every year, right? Yeah, uh, we, we never do. Yeah, we never do, but we should. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get on that next. Trying to find out where to catch your favorite team's games? Are you a fan of the Kings, Niners, and the NFL? Well, Sackdown Sports has you covered. Touchdown! Francisco! It's all on his shoulders. Cox rocks. He fires for the win. He's got the triple. Catch all your Kings, Niners, and NFL games all year long on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Bonnie. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman in the KCRA3 Weather Center. Bright sunshine for Monday. Temperatures climbing into the low 70s with a light onshore breeze in the evening. Tuesday morning, we start in the upper 40s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA News and the KCRA app. Imagine taking a nice warm bath in your shower. Uh, Let's fix that. Right now, get that clogged drain unclogged for just $67. Plumbing, sewer, electric, heating, and air. Bonnie.com. Some restrictions apply. License 696-355. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. If your Medi-Cal is ending, Cover California is here to help. Cover California is a service from the state that helps you get affordable health insurance. In many cases, at no cost to you, just like with Medi-Cal. We have quality health plans and we'll help you every step of the way to get the one that works for you and your family. 
So if you're no longer eligible for Medi-Cal, check out Cover California. We'll keep you covered. Learn more at CoveredCA.com. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event is on. Explore California this season with Toyota's legendary reliability. Take on spring with incredible fuel efficiency and more peace of mind. Right now, get low 3.99% APR financing on 2024 Highlander. Or check out great lease deals on the stylish 2024 Camry, Sporty Corolla, and Dynamic RAV4. Hurry in. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event ends soon. Toyota, let's go places. Offer available through TFS to buyers with premium rated credit. Excludes hybrids ends for 124 Hey, guys, do you know your T-level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T-level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation, and kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Discover your dream home at Subcontractors United, your source for all home improvement needs. A talented team of home services experts is ready to make your projects a breeze. No more endless internet searches. Find your contractors in one place. Enjoy stress-free service absolutely free with no hidden costs and no accounts to set up. Transform your living space into something extraordinary. Visit Subcontractors United today and experience the joy of hassle-free home improvement. Dream big at subcontractorsunited.com. Sports Fix. Live and vocal. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. Kings Grizz tonight. Eric Hasseltine in an hour. How you doing? I'm good. I got some stuff for you. Okay. I got some stuff for you. Random before we get to March Madness. Uh, You can only choose one. This is today's uh, social media question. Travel 50 years into the past. $100 $100 million or travel 50 years into the future? Wait. You get three choices. You can go 50 years into the past. You get $100 million, 50 years into the future. Can we all agree 50 years in the future is out? Like, why, really out. why would... I'm, I don't know. I'm going to just... Isn't this an easy one? It It is because I have children. That's the that's the hang up. Are you saying? If, are you doing the? If you go fifty years in the past, I can make more than a hundred million. Hundred percent. Wait, but if I'm I'm me now, yeah, going fifty years. Okay, so you know what you million. know. You know what you know. Yeah, you know what you know. Yeah, I take take the sure thing. No, I'm taking a hundred million. Yeah, but if but but only because I would I would lose my children. If I could, if I either didn't have my kids, or if I could take them with me. Well, wh- why would you? Why would I take them with me? No, why would you lose them? You you could know that part. You could yeah, find Melissa. Yeah, but then that's but yeah, but then Melissa, but Melissa's she stays here, and then she's gonna be. Oh, you catch up. So I'm like seventy. Well, I don't know. That's I don't know I'm how saying. that works. Yeah, I don't you know, know if you. St- yeah, I don't we have, don't know the rules of the time. No, nah, man. If I go back fifty years and she doesn't, then she, you know she's born in the eighties. Yeah, you would you, you would want to go back fifty years without any family. It's just you. You would want to no, go back to nineteen seventy four. Okay, first off. Ah, oh, too late to see the Beatles. First off, yeah. What are you this age in 1974? Yeah, I think okay. I think yes. I think you are. Yeah, but I'm guessing. I'm saying you don't age. 
in the 50 years. I don't know if that's a thing. So like you stay You're our age for the 50 years? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, don't time know how it works. works. That's a good point. I feel like if you were 30 years old and you go back in time, you're still, you just start aging from wherever you go back. Okay. In so time if you to. went forward 50 or whatever you are now and you just, yeah, then I'd be 30 years old in 50 years. And then I 31, 32, 33. Absolutely but. not. No, that's no. the least appealing. So you're saying if I went forward 50 years, I'd be 80. Oh, you're no. saying absolutely not. No, I would. Is. Yeah. I would yeah. go to the past Hell or the future. No, no but I would go the mil- hundred million first. 50 years in the past, yes. second, 50 yes. years in the future. Third. Yes, I agree with you. But I, I, again, 50 years in the past, just not on the table. I'd be like, I don't want, if I can't have the hundred million, I don't want either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't no. just because of the whole kid thing. Yeah. But if I didn't have them, peace. Yeah. I'd be weird with your parents though. 70s. Here right. I am. I, oh my God. That'd be hilarious. Are you in a back to the future situation? Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. And like, that's so funny. You're like, bro, let me tell you something. This this uh this new Ario Speedwagon band, they're gonna be good. You know, you'd be able to I just do... can't fight this feeling. Right. Oh, 74. Wait a minute. Was Vietnam no Vietnam was ending? Okay. How about with well, that stuff? the age. Oh, that's you're true. Oh, 70. that's a good point. Yeah, that that hit me a while back. I forget what the age was, but I was like, wow, I can't join the military anymore. I don't mean anything that about that. <laughs> no, I was just like, it was one of those like. Because you were ready. It was it's one of those like, that sounded bad. Be all that you can be. It was one of those out of context like, that's oh, that's a, fast a, day. That's, a, <laughs> that's a milestone. Oh. Like, I am old enough to not be able to. Like, if I was like, you know what? I'm going to go serve my country. Yeah. Nope, can't do it. Too old. Which is kind of discriminatory, yeah. right? Like, come on. Yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> I know. But like, I could offer. I could. I may not be, you I'll know, be the chef. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, let me give you some notes here. Uh, Kyrie Irving has hit a game-winning buzzer beater for three different teams in his career after hitting the one uh, yesterday for Dallas, Boston, Brooklyn, and of course the Mavs. Only- Never the Cavs, huh? Never the Cavs. Never the Cavs. How weird is that, right? Only two other active NBA players have hit game-winning buzzer beaters for three different teams: Derrick Rose, Chicago, Minnesota. And Detroit, and the other person that is hitting game winner for three different teams, we saw play the Knicks. We saw play for the Knicks? Play versus the Knicks on Saturday. Or at least he's on the team. It's a Sacramento King. Care to take a guess? Don't overthink it. Just run through. Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes. Golden State, Dallas, and Sacramento. Also, I, I don't know how much I want to go into this story, but did you guys see the jersey swap over the weekend? Yes. Yes. D- did they, like... They planned yeah, it. They did, did they? Yes, of course. There's lip reading experts that... Really? Yeah, yeah that was planned. Uh, since the All-Star break, blocks per game. Number three, Anthony Davis, 2.2. Number two, Rudy Gobert, 2.7. Number one, Victor Weminyama, 4.6. Uh, he is now the first player in NBA history with 200 or more blocks, 100 or more threes, 75 or more steals in a season. And against the Nets over the weekend, he had 33, 15, 7, and 7 on 14 and 26. He is now also the first player in NBA history with 30 or more. 15 or more rebounds, five or more assists, five or more blocks while shooting 50% or more in a game. Last Weminyama step. Victor Weminyama already has more career blocks than 81.4% of all active NBA players. Wow. Just saying. I feel like we're going to be doing this a lot with Victor Weminyama. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's good. What did you have? Mine, I know we were going to talk about the tournament here. So, uh, like tournament memories. Yeah. It's like, what is a tournament memory for you? And I wrote down what I think you're going to say. I mean, honestly, that took me a quick second because I was like, because you're kind of throwing me because I'm like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Right. And I'm like, oh, is it a Florida State thing? No. I mean, the craziest tournament memory, the earliest one I remember that really dug in that still to me is the Leitner shot. Mm, okay. Leitner, Kentucky, uh, uh, Duke. What did you – well, hold on. That's not it, though, right? That's not what I thought you were going to say. Was it a Florida State-related one? No. Okay. Um, it was more of a you-related one. 
knee related one or a tournament a tournament memory wasn't butler's barely miss well that was that's that pops what up. is most important for most people's tournament oh god oh 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 no but it's not a good memory though no. okay then you absolutely nailed it and by the way you're 100 percent correct shame on me and screw you mario chalmers screw you i hate i hate him i hate him so much i wrote i was at memphis kansas yes and i put memphis canvas kansas mario chalmers oh god my jacket just fell down it's so angry Yes, yeah. they had the lead. Yeah, Memphis had that game wrapped up. That would have been very productive for you. In the very bracket. productive. Yeah. That would have been my first championship. Yeah. Now, I'm not as mad as I used to be because I was able to avenge it and finally get a ring. But if I remember correctly, too, Jason, you might remember more. But I think now, again, in this tournament bracket, just to be clear, we play for fun money. You know, nothing, you know, of course. If I remember correctly, though, I think that took me from winning it. Didn't I not cash? Yes. Went from winning low thousands of fake money, <laughs> which still is fun to, you know, Absolutely. play with, to not cashing out at all so lame dude yeah. i hate him thanks thanks jason you're welcome what is yours oh uh, can i guess yes easy you've got oh, it. it's got to be ty lawson or uh or not ty lawson uh, who's the ucla guy who is not it? ty Law uh, uh no no yes uh hold on no uh, don't uh, <laughs> don't do it mario it's ty huh uh oh uh god come on ucla guard yes game winner yes against missouri yeah coast to coast i'm blanking ty is edney there you Son go biscuit eater. yeah which was round two on their way to a championship <sighs> that was a great moment yeah that was a great moment for all um i was so I mean, yeah. they, they went to commercial i mean i was just defeated you know UCLA timeout i'm like oh my gosh they're going to be out already. I was, uh, but they stayed alive. Stayed alive. What? What? How long did they end up winning it that year? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was only round two. Want to remind you, Jiffy Lube, driving the game next segment. So get your memories together, and you can get yourself a one hundred dollars gift certificate to Jiffy Lube. Speaking of uh, guards that are clutch, congratulations to our own Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. who got himself a ten day deal, I believe, with the uh, Phoenix Suns. Good for him. Yeah. And hopefully he gets a shot. I, I just, I, I hope he gets a shot. Not just like, okay, here you are. And yeah. The last three of a blowout. Like, give this guy a shot, man. He's had one of the, so weird. It when is. He, it, it's just weird when you think about it. It'd be nice if he was still on the Suns when they come here for the 81st game of the oh year. Oh, my God. That would be so great. Yeah. What an ovation he would yeah. get. He would get a standing ovation. Yeah, there. absolutely. Oh, so weird when you think about Isaiah Thomas. Like, if you took Isaiah Thomas with the with Boston, and then imagine how quickly he'd be out of the league. And then you took Demarcus Cousins when he got traded from the Kings, and then looked at the rest of his career. Yeah. I mean, granted, he had a really good run with the Pelicans to start until he hurt himself. But talk about two guys that just went just dropped like yeah, a rock it's too bad it really is too it, it really is too bad but i'm super super happy uh that he's getting an opportunity yeah. uh and and speaking of opportunity i, I want to invite everybody to take the opportunity to go to firewings.com
next. Our first year as the radio home of the San Francisco 49ers is one we will never forget. They're going to give it. No, it's a play action. Purdy going to roll left throw for the end zone. Caught by George Kittle. He has the hat trick tonight. A career high. Three touchdown catches for George. Touchdown! San Francisco! Congratulations to the 49ers on a terrific year. And thank you for so many wonderful memories. If you're looking to get a new car, you could really cut expenses by bundling your car and renter's insurance with Progressive. Sure, you love your old car, but you know it's not normal to give instructions on how to open the window. It should be self-explanatory, but it's not. And notice how when you're in other people's cars, you can feel cushion in the seats? That's pretty nice, right? No, it's just normal. So bundle your renters and car insurance with Progressive and put the savings toward a new car. It's time. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Not available in all states. Ball four, take your base. The only thing worse than a pitcher running out of gas on the mound is your old phone running out of storage for your photos in the stands. Goodbye, home run! Switch to Verizon and get a great deal on a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage for all the ballpark picks you want. Just trade in your iPhone, any model, in any condition, so you'll feel like you're winning even when your team's not. Trade in any iPhone in any condition for a great deal on iPhone 15 Pro with Unlimited Ultimate and get iPad and Apple Watch SE with eligible service plan, only on Verizon. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Ulta Beauty semi-annual beauty event is happening now. Unleash your love for beauty with 50% off daily beauty steals on hair, skin, makeup, and fragrance. Shop your favorite brands like Tarte and Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. Plus, grab perfect hair care pairs from brands like Redken and Olaplex. And check out new arrivals from brands like Charlotte Tilbury and Dyson. Shop the Ulta Beauty semi-annual beauty event online, in-store, or try pickup today. Now through March 28th. Ulta Beauty. The possibilities are beautiful. Conditions apply. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda, yeah, your one-stop Honda. Hi, everyone. It's Emron Pilati, the host of the True Sports Card Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I'm excited about our second location at the Roseville Galleria as True Sports Cards continues our expansion. And to celebrate this day, we're excited to announce that Kevin Herter from the Sacramento Kings will be signing autographs on March 30th at 3 p.m. You can get your tickets for this event right now by going to truesportscards.com, searching Kevin Herter in the search bar and buying your ticket. Limited tickets are available, so please go to the website, truesportscards.com, and get your Kevin Herter tickets right now. Sources and he just kind of tells it as it is and gets to the point. Jason Ross. He has a lot of pretty smart things to, to say. He's good at what he does. On Sacktown Sports. 916-339-1140. Is your text line? And you can call it one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty right now for the Jiffy Lube drive of the game. One hundred dollar Jiffy Lube gift certificate. All you got to do is just call out the play that G Man called out on Saturday. I don't even remember anymore what it was. It's that far removed? Wow. Yeah. Well, let's see if somebody out there does. I predict there will be a woo in the background. <laughs> Well, wouldn't that have to be a, it's a, not a Knicks yeah, highlight? Yeah, it's not a Knicks highlight. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Looking at it right now. It's the one where. The, oh, ooh, and that. And, wow. that, and then oh. it went to the. And then the score. Yeah. Okay. Goal. Goal. Uh, just some notes from the text line talking about do you go back 50 years, go forward 50 years, or get 100 million? From the 279, hey, Dave, uh, I lived through it and survived. 
But 50 years ago, there was no internet, cell phones, or microwaves. A single dude is screwed. Yeah, that's right, because I wouldn't have the kids or the wife. It's a great point. God, what do they do for entertainment in 1974? Watch your three channels. Go outside. But you've already didn't. seen all the shows. It would be kind of torturous because you know the difference. Now. Right. Then you didn't know. Then the you didn't know. So you just did the thing. Yeah. And everything's a repeat. Yeah. Might be new to you. Uh, I didn't think about that. God, entertainment would suck. Go to a concert for like $4. Hey, it's Aerosmith, this new band. <laughs> be kind of cool. Also, also styles are different too. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. Also, there'd be other things to get used to when it comes to grooming. Yeah. Mm, gross. <laughs> okay, I'll take the hundred million, dude. <laughs> that that does that. I'm a hundred million or go back fifty years with a with a or forward with 50 clippers no i'm not going forward okay. 50 no way dude first off how bad would that suck you pick go forward 50 years and you're alone on a scorched earth like what if that's what it was well, that's what's happening in 50 years just saying you okay. never know okay what are there what is a trick Maybe. question well what if this was in 19 uh 74 yeah, well, then, what you know, post, you, know like, you can go forward to 2024. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. We're going to have flying cars and yeah. everything's going to be fantastic. Inflatable houses. Yeah. It's going to be a utopia. The only time the future was ever good that I can remember in anything was like Star Trek, where like they, they made it like that. But even then you had like weird aliens attacking you. Like everything else is like the future. Everything's a Earth seemed pretty cool though, huh? Earth, Earth well, yeah, Earth was chill. Like uh, the headquarters was in San Francisco. It was all nice and clean. Like how? Uh, uh, like you look at Terminator and their future, for example. Like we're if if tell me that this doesn't seem like we're on the way to Terminator. Like I uh, this dystopian world where like machines run, like, come on, we're like yeah. in, we're in, they always say, well, if I only knew then what I know now, we kind of know. Yeah. Like you see those videos where it's like Timmy, the robot reacts to his nose being touched. It's like, bro, kill that thing with fire right now. What's fire. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man, this whole thing, it, we're, we're going down a, a, a bad rabbit hole here where next thing you know, the, the corporation's reaction to, to the whole minimum wage, and Chris is going to love this, minimum wage should raise. Well, I, I hear you. But, like, you know what's going to happen, dude. Everything, every fast food place is going to have robots within the next five years serving you. Hey, maybe robot kings could win a championship. That'd be awesome. Just robot basketball? Oh, would it be? Hmm. I mean, do you even call fouls at that point? <laughs> and what is a flagrant foul? Robots. You got, yeah. Like during the break, trainers over there like squirting oil at you. Because you're a robot. You have to lube up. Maybe Keegan's a robot. <sighs> I think he is. Uh, also, Keegan needs to quit hiding during the the the, uh, the defensive player of the year picture. Have you noticed that's his new thing now? He hides behind somebody. Oh. So it's like, where's Waldo? You have to find the Keegan. Uh, is he smiling or not? I know. He, I I would love to think that he's behind somebody like, ha! <laughs> but I don't think he <laughs> you is. Just can't quite tell. Um, it was a very enjoyable. I thought, and this is Styles, and, and and not Alan, but different styles, and maybe some people don't like that stuff. I liked the physicality for the most part on Saturday. I love the atmosphere. I wanted to win. It seemed like a playoff game, but. The thing is, is that one of the notes on the Kings around the league seems to be they don't, they're not, with the exception of DeMontis Sabonis, they're not the most physical. And by the way, if you can match Sabonis's physicality with a center, there's going to be trouble. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. So that begs the question, can they handle a team that does bully ball? And there's not a lot of them. I would say the Knicks do it. And I didn't feel like they were overmatched, though. No. Did you while you watched it? Uh, like physically? I did, I did not. Now the Knicks do it and do it a lot, and maybe they're just more trained and have it more in their DNA than the Kings do. But I didn't leave that game thinking the Kings couldn't handle it, but it also wasn't what we typically see from the Kings. Like it's just the way they play, the free flowing offense. The Knicks are just collapsing the paint, a lot of dig downs, pushing guys off screens. Like they, that's a physical team. 
the Pelicans are also kind of physical. Mm-hmm. And Valanchunas and the Pelicans have just kind of worked the yeah. Kings this year. Mike Brown referenced Houston. I was just going to say, Houston is physical, uh, led by Dylan Brooks, but that's a fairly physical team. Uh, that's That's the scary part. And the Celtics can be physical. Not none of these are at the Kings or Knicks level, excuse me. But I would also say this: you know who else has physical players? The Pistons. Mm-hmm. Now, all but twelve teams this year have figured that out. But we forget: not only did Detroit beat Sacramento at Golden One Center, Detroit probably should have beaten Sacramento in in Detroit. So I would say that is it is it a true statement? So far, it is that 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 the 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 line on the Kings is if you punch them in the mouth a few times, if you lean on them, eventually they'll at least bend. Now, I also want to be clear here too. I'm super. I'm not moral victory. <laughs> you know this. Mm-hmm. I'm actually super proud of how they played Saturday. They didn't play perfect, like you said. They were in it, and I'm in no way trying to call them out. For anything, I was really, I will take that loss over 95% of our losses this year. I wanted the win, but I was very proud. I thought they played their tails off. Just because physicality can hurt more teams than others, that doesn't, I'm not calling them soft. I'm, right. not, I'm not calling them no heart, not, nothing like that. Some teams don't like playing teams that shoot a lot of three-pointers. I don't know. It, that just seems to be their Achilles heel, if there is one, is slow the game down, play super physical, grind it out, and in the end, you got a really good shot at beating them. Yeah. That's, I think, the key. That is that that is unfortunately the key there. And, and I thought if there's a positive, Jason, The Kings almost won the most physical game they've played this year. Yeah. Shot terribly. Yeah. Um, Let's bring that physicality tonight. Yeah. Doesn't because have to Memphis be as much. Is, in the past has been a physical That's game. That's exactly right. At least they showed that they have that club in their back. They, yeah. they may not be able to match the physicality of a Knicks team, but that's how that team is built. Yeah. But at least, but there's not a lot of teams in the West, two that we've counted that, that we feel like really can out out muscle the kings and they have arguably the most physical center in the game we'll take a break when we come back should the niners feel even better about brock purdy why do you ask well look at what's going on around the league we'll get a standings update from the kings at 8 13 and then eric has joins us ahead of frankie Cardicelli later in the program it's dave jason and chris we'll be right back after this you never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. At L.L. Floyd, we've been a trusted partner to pros for over 30 years. With over 400 nationwide warehouses full of in-stock, job-ready inventory, you'll get what you need. And our exclusive pro pricing means that pros never pay retail. Because at L.L. Floyd, all we do is floors. So we're going to do it right. Sign up for a free pro account today to start getting pro benefits. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum full synthetic oil change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum full synthetic oil change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil Oil changes, visit jiffylube.com for more details and valuable coupons today. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my hiding spots. Ha, found ya. How? 
That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. At Ashton and Price, we get injury victims to yes. Experience, yes. Ashton and Price has been around for over 25 years. No more insurance companies, yes. Our clients focus on getting better and we handle all the rest. Results, yes. We've collected over $100 million for injury victims. No fee until we win, yes. Our clients pay nothing until we win. Ashton and Price, the best at getting to yes. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave asking you, are you feeling the pain of paying more and more for your gas? PG&E has increased their rates four times in the last five years, and the new forecast says PG&E customers may see their bills increase 32% by 2026. The good thing is there are steps you can take to protect yourself from these rate hikes, and better yet, American Energy may be able to help you completely eliminate your gas bill with a new ultra-high efficiency comfort system. Did you know SMUD offers huge Huge rebates to eliminate your old gas guzzler. They can help you guide through the whole process. Seriously, listen to me. You go to the SMUD website. There's tons of rebates available, but it is confusing on how to do it. Listen to these rebates. $2,500 from American Energy, $3,500 from SMUD, $1,000 from Caltech, $2,000 home system upgrades. That's $9,000 in rebates. Let American Energy help you out at 916-520-9990. Call 916 520 Capital Casino conveniently located on 411 at North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. From the power business technology Toshiba Studios, KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento, the only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song, and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone. And then boom! With Jason Ross. No! He did it! Yes! He did! Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. says we're giving away tickets to Jeff Lynn's L.O. Because <laughs> there's no little dots after the E-L-O. Somebody say L-O. Hello. 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 Uh, yeah, you're Jeff- basically saying Alan. I I did <laughs> not say it. Well, you're right. Yeah. 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 Why he's not. Why he, why he's probably been to a couple yeah, of E-L-O. Probably concerts. used their uh, music as a backdrop for one of his songs, I'm sure. So did you see why he put out a song? Like yeah. a week ago. He's done that a couple times. Yeah, I lately. missed those. Yeah. What is mad at Super me? talented. What is mad at me? The wickedly talented. Did you know he's mad at me? No, why? Yeah, he's mad. I, I'll tell you off the air. Oh. I don't think he's for real mad. Oh. At me. Oh. I told I Chris. I would say frustrated. I shouldn't be frustrated. That's bothered. You know, the only other thing is he told he, t- he texted me on Friday what I'm talking about, which I can't share, which I know is bad radio. But he texted me a thing. And then, like all weekend, it bothered it bothered me oh, all. Now I want to know all weekend long. And I went, to, and the worst part is, I went to Chris, and I was like, "Hey, man, so like, is this? You know, I feel like this is this should this be?" Chris was like, "Well, actually, dude, <laughs> I was like, really, he's a hundred percent on Whitey's side. Well, it's not a side. I'm not arguing. Okay, I Paul, I was, I, like, I believe I answered well." When you look at it from his perspective, <laughs> <laughs> only one way is mad at me. Um, we are giving away ELO tickets, though. We'll do that in the 9 a.m. And uh, that's right after uh, Frankie comes on. Yeah, right, right at 9 a.m. Uh, Brock Purdy. Hey. Hey, now. Brock Purdy wins my 2023 slash 24 weirdest media coverage of anything sports related award. I, I, I just didn't understand. And I really tried to do the whole, well, you're a Niner fan. You're biased. 
look at kind of like what Chris said on Friday, look at it from other people's perspectives. True. I just, I've never seen coverage of an athlete under any circumstances like this, the way it was with Brock. Mr. Irrelevant, super quiet, you know, very, uh, he's into his, like, I think, think, God, I, unless I'm wrong, I think the thing he's been most vocal about other than just playing football has probably been his faith. Right. And I'm not a religious guy, but I completely respect stuff. Like, good dude, you're grounded. You, you've got a set of morals and ethics and blah, blah, blah. And you're trying to be a role model. Like, I respect that. Yeah. I respect the heck out of that. A lot of good stuff about a lot that. of good stuff about that. So here's this quiet, humble kid whose teammates uh, not love him, adore him, who comes in, has this ridiculous record. His first year gets knocked out of the NFC championship game and avenged that and then some the following season in Philly and then is a couple of possessions away from being a Super Bowl champion and losing to Patrick Mahomes who has had the best start of any quarterback ever and a dynasty in the Chiefs. Yeah, and all the while, like we talked about earlier, Justin Fields and then even Mac Jones and uh, his own teammate, Trey Lance. All these guys that have been drafted in the last couple of years are either backups or they've been dealt. And if I were to say to you, after a year and a half, I'm going to give you some quarterbacks, and I want you to tell me less or more accomplished. Okay. I know the answer already. Well, here's a fun one. <clears throat> the, the first guy I'm going to start with. Who's more accomplished in their career? Brock Purdy or Josh Allen? Josh Allen. Is he more accomplished? I would say so. How many NFC? How many? AFC, how many? He's never been to an NFC championship game. First he off. has not. Um, Shame on him. But how many AFC championship games has he been? How many has he won? How many uh, Super Bowl appearances? None. But he's been to an AFC championship. He has been to one. one he's been to. I thought. I think he's been to one. Okay. Brock's been to two, right? And he won one. I say more accomplished. <laughs> okay. Tua. I don't care who's that. Well, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Well, I'll give him that. Uh, Lamar Jackson, probably more accomplished, right? MVP, all that. Yeah. Tw Two-time MVP. Yeah. Nobody on Cleveland. Nobody on Pittsburgh. Ooh. Joe Burrow. Probably Burrow, right? Because Burrow's been to a Super Bowl and two AFC championships. I mean, they're basically the same they're, they're, track record. Right? Track record. People are going to take Burrow over Purdy, but right. But if you're going credentials, they're the same. And that's all I'm saying. By yeah. the way, this isn't me saying that right, Rob better? Purdy's better than right. Joe Burrow. This is uh, just that type of a con. They're basically the same. And oh, by the way, Brock Purdy has a higher winning percentage. I promise okay. you that. Uh, but that's an interest that like that's probably the comp that right? is that's the comp. And if Brock Purdy and I have said this from the jump, and I, I say I've said it like a thousand people said it, but <laughs> if Brock Purdy was the number one pick of the draft, the two, the three, the 10, the 13, everybody be oh, Brock Purdy, the what future. a pick. Bro, bro, bro. Yeah. And it's like, that's the thing that really has, we've been doing this a long time, Jason. I've never seen anything like this. And I still can't get the Sigmund Freud answer on the psychologist couch. Why? Right. My best guess is that for a Mr. Irrelevant to be ignored, you would have to acknowledge that every team and every GM missed on this guy like seven times. Yeah, and people won't do that. And people won't do that. There's a like, refusal to do that. There's a refusal to do that. And then it's like, well, he's a product of his team. Every quarterback's a product right. of their team. You go, well, okay, but he leaves the league in air yards. Look at the ratings. This and that. Blah, blah, blah. Nah. Yeah. Well, he's got all these guys. But, okay. Everybody has all these guys. If you're winning Super Bowls or getting close, they have all these guys. Well, you want to take a look at who Jalen Hurts had on offense and defense when Philly was in the Super Bowl? Right. Criminy. Say what you want. Okay, Patrick Mahomes. Has Patrick Mahomes ever won outside of Andy Reid's system? No. No, he has not. Yeah. Not one time. Not once. It's like, dude. Yeah. Anyways, rant over. Hmm. 
you've got Brock Purdy who's making, you know, $7 an hour to play top level quarterbacking. Really good benefits though. Really good benefits. <laughs> but now you have Justin Fields who got shipped to Pittsburgh for a a, a sandwich, uh, a conditional sandwich. <laughs> Trey Lance, who was the number three pick. Right. And 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 by the way, that's really the only way I think Niner fans can rest is just I think we all just pretend that Trey Lance was Mr. Irrelevant and Brock Purdy was pick number three. Because otherwise barf. Right. Mac Jones. I mean, we had we What had is a, he even gonna be? I have that's the like, thing. Like, is he gonna be a starter ever again? And if I were to say to you, Jason, one of Fields, Lance, or Mac Jones will be an all-pro someday. We'll make a Pro Bowl. Fields, Lance, or J- Fields. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. I do agree I'm with really you. still intrigued by Trey Lance, so am I. but so am I. you got to get an opportunity, He's right? kind of stuck behind Dak Prescott at this yeah. point. Uh, the Niners got more for Trey Lance from Dallas than – the other two teams grabbing Justin Fields and Mac Jones, who had far more starts. Now, maybe part of that's the intrigue of yeah. Trey Lance. Now, I can't remember. Were the Niners, I guess, were they ripped for that? Were they ripped for not getting enough? They were probably already ripped because, hey, look, they moved <sighs> yeah. up to get them, and this is what it cost them at the time. But, you know, cut your losses, right? I mean, that's kind of what they did. Yeah. They, 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 they cut their losses. And, and they knew that Purdy was the guy. Like, they identified that. At that point, it was yeah. free money for them. Right. And now Brock's the only quarterback from 21 or 22 that has won a conference championship and appeared in a Super Bowl. And we're going to do this again, though. All these quarterbacks are going to get drafted from the 2023 class is still kind of intact until it's not. This year, there are going to be more quarterbacks taking that high again. It's the exercise that's just going to keep on going. And and I, I it still is so weird to me in a sport where – you have where knowing that how important quarterback is and you got a guy like Brock Purdy and it's like, look, dude, I don't need people to like go to the church of Brock every Sunday. I get it. Like you, unless you're a Niner fan, but my God, I'd like to think if Brock Purdy was on another team as a Niner fan, I, I'm, I wouldn't be slobbering on him like I do. But I'd be like, that's a really good story. Yeah. I, I root for him in every game that he doesn't play us. Like, what a great story. What a what a walking Disney movie. Also, most random stat of the weekend, speaking of. What the hell is Bryce Young doing at a Kings game? What was that? It continues to streak. This is something that's happened for about three or four years where there's just like usually, and it's kind of around draft time, and they're usually with, um, and I don't know if that happened this time, but. Why did I just blank on Car- uh, Jordan Palmer? Carson's Jordan Palmer. Brother. And I don't know if they're all attached to him, but usually like last year, I remember, and I would know this because of UCLA, but Dorian Thompson Robinson was there <laughs> and a couple other drafted potential yeah. QBs. Um, they've had this going for a while. It's like, why are these guys? It's so weird. One? It's so rare. And there were two other players, and forgive me, I don't remember who they were. I think there was a Tennessee Titan and someone else. But so, then, there was no wide receiver there. Yeah. Too. yeah. And uh, from the Bengals, I think. Yeah. And they're like, and. Bryce Young, like Bryce Young. Yeah, what is that? The number one pick of the pay- like. Wh- what are you doing yeah. here? It was it, I, honestly somebody somewhere's got to have a list of like yeah. the rare. I mean, I know a lot of you know Vivek likes to yeah s- you know sniff around the. What am I trying to say here? He. <laughs> what are you trying to say here? Vivek, um, God bless him. Vivek well, it's is fun to have stars. That's building. what I'm saying. Vivek likes to welcome. Yeah. celebrities yeah. as his guests. Right. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't even think like, was he sitting with the vet? Uh, a few seats down? Yeah, down there courtside. It's got to be a list of like the top rando. That's up there. It's like you look over there for a while. Remember, it's like you look over there. Floyd Mayweather was going to a bunch of games. Yeah, but, and wasn't he good? Or I say friends, we're good friends. But I thought he and Isaiah Thomas had a yes. They did. Friendship. No, yeah. they did. They had. Yeah, they were. Uh, I don't know how close they were. But by the way, just seeing what the connection is here, if there is one, Bryce Young was uh, born in Philly, moved to Pasadena, uh, attended. Uh, Modern day. Did he go there. from Philly to California because he got in one little fight. one little fight as as uh, mom got scared? 
and uh, moved, moved him with his, was it his grandma and grandpa? Was it his cousin? Out to Pasadena. Yeah, it was, oh, it was Auntie and his uncle was uh, out to Pasadena. We'll take a break when we come back. Jason, if you have a moment. I do. Uh, I would like to take a look at the standings. Okay. Uh, we actually had some predictions on Friday, and uh, we'll follow through with those coming up. Uh, and uh, not a lot of help from Texas. We'll talk about that more next. The Sacramento Kings play here. He's got the triple. Sacramento takes the lead. Get your Kings fix all season long right here on your home of the Sacramento Kings. Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. In this market, you'll find Fisher Investments is different than other money managers. Different how? Aren't we all just looking for the hottest stocks? Nope. We use diversified strategies to position our clients' portfolios for their long-term goals. You don't just provide cookie-cutter portfolios? No. We tailor our clients' portfolios to their goals and needs. But you still sell investments that generate high commissions for you, right? No, we don't sell commission-based products. We're a fiduciary, the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. It means we're obligated to act in our client's best interest. So when do you make more money? Only when your clients make more money? Yep, we have one transparent management fee structured, so we do better when our clients do better. Sounds like you really look out for your clients. We do, because our priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly, different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Subscribe to Sackdown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports. and purple it's the carmichael dave show with jason ross on your local sports leader Sacktown sports <laughs> on the brock purdy conversation from the tax line at 916-339-1140 guys wasn't this the same issue with brady taking six round he was assistant quarterback for the first half of his career Really wasn't looked at as the greatest of all time until the 2017 season when he was a statistical monster. No one wanted to admit he was the GOAT for a long time. I I, I thought about that. I, I, I don't disagree with the text necessarily philosophically. I will say I don't think that, like, I can admit when I look at Brock Purdy, I feel like Brock Purdy is is your, like, high football IQ above average talent type of dude. Whereas like Tom Brady, like he didn't have the Peyton Manning, Dan Marino gun. Don't get me wrong. But like, I don't know. I I have a hard time believing that Brock's going to pass for 5,000 yards and 40 touchdowns in a season in his career. I I, I can admit that, but just the, it's, it's just more of the, more of the, I just don't know why people are like, it's like they hate him. (laughs) <laughs> and like any time he does anything wrong, oh, see, see system you. quarterback. Right. Anyways, uh, thanks, Kyrie Irving. Uh, Did you see that that buzzer that beater? Incredible. That was an incredible shot, though. It really, really was. Yeah. And, I, and I don't, after Denver worked their way back, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a great day. The Bucks had already beaten the Suns earlier in the day without Giannis. Yeah. Oh, you know, by the way, like, so I don't know if you spent any time on that game. I didn't watch a ton of it. I saw the halftime, and I went, wow, this conversation sounds very, very familiar. So it was Michael Wilbon, Bob Myers. Those two kind of were going back and forth a little bit about. They were kind of frustrated by both teams. I think the Bucks were up 22 at the half mm-hmm. without Giannis. And they were kind of going over the conversation, like, who are these guys? Like, who are the Bucks? How are they up 22 on the Suns? And they've been up and down. And then they kind of turned to the Suns. Well, who are they? Like, I, I can't figure out the Suns. I can't figure out the Bucks. And I went, wow, that conversation sounds very, very familiar. Then it kind of morphed into, well, who do you trust? Really, it felt like Boston and Denver is all they ended up trusting. Sure. And like, well, maybe that conversation is kind of what we've been saying for the just insert Kings, insert Suns, insert Bucks, insert Clippers. Yeah. Pick your team, Lakers, whoever they want to talk about. We always talk about the Kings. 
but it feels like that's kind of been a common theme. Like they literally didn't understand either team. And at the time the bucks were up 22. They, the, the I was honestly a little surprised without Giannis. Yeah. That, that even though it was in Milwaukee, they the, just hit him with a bunch of threes. They did 14 of 33 from beyond the arc 20 for the Suns versus 24 yeah. of 41. 10 That's, more makes 30 more points oof. beyond the arc. Uh, they shot 54, 58, 100. Mm. The Bucks did. Yeah. Uh, but what stood out to me, Jason, from that game, and we're not going to you know, spend any more than this amount of time on it, but uh, two things. Number one, Dame Lillard had 31 points without Giannis. You'd accept that. Mm-hmm. You, you, you'd accept, uh, uh, expect that, excuse me. Bobby Portis had 31 points? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. He had 31 points in 30 minutes. But that's not what stood out to me. Uh, Grayson Allen had 25, Bradley Beal had 28, Devin Booker had 23. In 41 minutes, Kevin Durant had 11 points on 4 of 10 shooting. That That is wow. that is almost impossible. And I didn't watch the game, so yeah. I'd love to go back and look, and I probably will later today. Uh, I really want to know who was checking Kevin Durant that game because whoever that was, Good for you. You're the you're the real MVP, dude. Because that that is 11 points in 41 minutes for Kevin Durant. I got to be honest with you, Jason. I got to think for Kevin Durant's career in games that he has played 30, let's call it 37 minutes or more. You could maybe count on one hand at most two hands how many times he's had 11 points or less. Yeah, and you said what 10 shots? Uh, four of 10. Oh. Four of 10. So it wasn't even like he was like one of 18 and just nothing was going in at any point. Uh, so the, the Bucks beat the Suns. Thank you there. Uh, unfortunately, the Mavericks were able to beat the Nuggets. 107, 105. The uh, Hawks went into L.A. and yeah. mushed the Clippers. You know what's going on there now? Here come the Pelicans. Pelicans and Clippers could flip-flop here. Mm-hmm. They really that, that top four was its own tier. Yes. Clippers have struggled a bit lately. Pelicans have been hot. That that gap's closing really quickly. Well, and and you're right. The Pelicans are a game behind the Clippers. However, only one back. Uh, they are one back wow. of the Clippers. But the Suns, the Mavs, and the Kings, yeah, they're two and a half behind the Clippers. Mm-hmm. So that that, that that's starting thing. to become a thing. Yeah, and then you have and the by th- two and a half. You mean three and a half? Uh, eight, seven. No, Pelicans. I'm, well, I'm looking at it like this: the Pelicans are six back of the Thunder, and then I just go down and see that uh, the Suns, Mavs, and Kings are eight and a half back of the Thunder. So then I just say two and a half. You're you're looking. Is that not the right way to do it? Wait, are we saying back of the Clippers? Six and a half, eight and a half oh, minus but five. Also, but hold on. Also, also. I like to look at the Pelicans instead of the Clippers when I do that math too. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as I said, Chris. They're three and a half behind the Clippers, <laughs> two and a half behind the Pelicans. You were saying it so confidently. I'm like, oh, man, what did I do? <laughs> I was living at the six with the Pelicans. Thank you for that. Three and a half behind the Clippers, two and a half behind the Pelicans. Um, what what's, This West is just so weird, dude. Jason, I'm going to go down the uh, just real quick. And I'm also gonna, the Rockets. Uh, so the Rockets have won five in a row. Here they come. All of a sudden, the Rockets are carry the three, three and a half behind the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go and start with the Thunder and go down in order. So the Thunder have won two in a row. Okay. The Nuggets have lost their last, last game. The Wolves have won two in a row. The Clippers have lost two in a row. The Pelicans have won two in a row. The Kings have lost their last game. The Mavericks won their last game. The Suns lost their last game. The Warriors won their last game. The Lakers have lost their last two. And the Rockets have won their last five. It's alternating the whole way down. It's so close. You've got your cluster of three at the top. I'm comfortable in saying now that you have your cluster of five in the middle. Granted, Mm -hmm. three and a half is three and a half, but we still got time. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have this cluster of three at the nine, ten, and eleven with the Rockets saying, "Hey, we may not be done yeah. yet." Did that five game winning streak. So that start with the Kings. It might. Have, it's got to be close to it, right? That was a week ago. Maybe, maybe they had won a game before that, but it's gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting end yeah. of the year. That's why you got to beat a team like Memphis. Tonight. You have to at this point, dude. It's like, come on, man. 
Can we not screw around? No more bananas in the tailpipe. Yes. Can we just get out there and find that effing dog, like Miss Lippy said to Billy Madison? Like, we got to do it. Remaining strength to schedule, Jason. Uh, Sacramento, we said they'd be out of the top 10 probably after playing the Knicks. They are at 10. They have the 10th most difficult strength to schedule remaining. Phoenix, number two, the second toughest. Oklahoma City, the seventh toughest. New Orleans, the ninth toughest. The Clippers, the 13th toughest. Minnesota, 15. Uh, and then we go all the way down. Lakers, 22nd. And Golden State, 26. Dallas, the 29th. Only, mm. only one team has an easier strength of schedule the rest of the way. And, of course, it's who it should be. Boston? Boston is the easiest. Strength. Well, part of that is they don't have to play themselves. That's what I'm saying, man. That record up there, but yeah, good for them. Boston's toughest games remaining: the Thunder once, the Bucks twice, the Pelicans once, the Knicks once, the Kings once. I'll tell you one thing: I would love to see a full strength Bucks team against the team we played Saturday at that strength. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a fun game. That's my God. If it's if it's the healthy Bucks versus the healthy Knicks somewhere in the playoffs, that's going to be a blast of a playoff series. Yeah. Also makes you wonder with with Tom Thibodeau. I get it, champagne problems, but uh, I forget. Robinson's out for the year, right? Yeah, Miss okay. Robinson. But Randall's what happens when back, Randall comes right? back? What do you do? Move. Uh, they won't play the three guards. Move DiVincenzo back to the bench, probably. And of course, you play Randall, and of course, that's what you do. Yeah. You just kind of is it possible that Julius Randall could a, a, a fantastic NBA player, but he's got to buy into what they're doing right. right now and come back and engage himself because it wouldn't be the weirdest thing in the world if he came back and all of a sudden a few. Th and sometimes you just don't want to mess with what you got. Right. And I think right now they've got. They've got something pretty cool going on in yeah. New York. We saw that on display. And again, I'm not trying to little little at the Knicks, but uh, what does that even mean? I don't know. Okay, we'll take a break. When we come back, hey, hey, it's our guy Hazeltine, the voice of the Grizzlies. Eee. Used to be on the Net Show. <laughs> He's going to join us. Eric Hazeltine next. Subscribe to Sackdown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Sacktown Sports. For a precision crafted performance, the decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at AcuraOfStockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision-crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and AcuraOfStockton.com. Discover your dream home at Subcontractors United, your source for all home improvement needs. A talented team of home services experts is ready to make your projects a breeze. No more endless internet searches. Find your contractors in one place. Enjoy stress-free service absolutely free with no hidden costs and no accounts to set up. Transform your living space into something extraordinary. Visit Subcontractors United today and experience the joy of hassle-free home improvement. Dream big at subcontractorsunited.com. Right now, the sewer system is probably the last thing on your mind. And that's okay, because at the Sacramento Area Sewer District, it's our first priority. If you have a sewer problem like a slow drain or a backup, call us first day or night. Taste on a whole new level at Sky River Casino in Elk Grove. Enjoy the height of hospitality whether you're craving an upscale steakhouse, authentic Chinese hot pot and dim sum or having a refreshing beverage while watching the game. Visit skyriver.com today. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Arnold Law Firm has seen how an injury can turn anyone's life upside down. Whether it's a slip and fall, a car accident or any other kind of injury. For almost 50 years, the Arnold Law Firm has been here to help you through the entire process to protect you and your family. If you are ever injured or in an accident, call the Arnold Law Firm. The Arnold Law Firm, providing real justice for you since 1975. Call 916-777-7777. That's 916-777-7777. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jake Owen. 
barefoot blue jean night. Walker Hayes. Fancy like and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by California Army National Guard, Major Wood Home Furnishings, and RVs of Sacramento. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Arch support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Arch Support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are gonna function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Sacktown Sports. All right, welcome back. Is that uh, Chris Efforts? Eric Hasseltine. Oh, we got him. We got him. All right, joining us right now. Play by play voice of the hated. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I hate these guys. You, you, wow. Just everything about them. Even their play by play voice? No, not him. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh, uh, well, I can't think of anything bad. Uh, <laughs> former KHK, former voice of UC Davis. Yeah. Um, whenever I have him on, since you and I started doing the show, I, I go back to being like the little kid again, uh-huh. on with my two older brothers and, uh, the king of outkicking coverage. I've always said, God bless Good him point. for it. Gotta wonder why, uh, the one, the only <laughs> Eric Hasseltine. Good morning. Well, first of all, I didn't know your head could get any bigger until I saw it on the side of the building last night coming out of Tom's after we uh, met up with some friends. Good Lord, man. What do you want? It's genetics, dude. I got a big head. You walked in. The bartender said, why the long face? Right. I said genetics. (laughs) Yeah. My brain goes sideways. Uh, What do you want? Yeah, I know. No, it was cool. It was kind of cool to see you guys up there on that. That's good publicity. No, I, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. We need a new picture, don't we? Though I didn't even know we were. No, up there. it's good. Uh, yeah, we're like that, digitally. I feel like that's when Kane Brown went Kane Brown, then you guys. Yeah, it's one where I'm in like the Red Republic shirt, and you're, yeah. I don't know, we're in golf shirts. Yeah, but remember the other one you had? That oh you really God, hated? the used car salesman yes. one. I'm wearing a button up. Yeah. Anyways, uh, how are you, buddy? You just right. We'll get to stuff, but you know, you got a lot of. You yeah. still got a lot. There's a lot of Hazel Tyner still here. <laughs> a lot of people just just loving you. Eric's coming on. They're excited. They remember you. Uh, how's life? Are you now officially like? How long ago did you finally consider yourself, or do you, a Tennessean? I don't. No, you're still a Californian. I'm a gypsy. I'm a gypsy. I'm a, well, this is home. <laughs> I'm a float. I've lived there longer than anywhere, singly. Uh, because here I split time between Walnut Creek and, and Sacramento. So in one actual city, I've lived in Memphis longer. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good to be, to answer your question. I'm good. Um, just kind of rolling through as, as we go. It's been 23 years. I was thinking about that when we landed today and I saw the new Costco out where the old arena used to be and all the new development. And, you know, people were asking, they always like to ask questions. Well, what's that? I'm like, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what that is. It was not there when I was here. I have no clue. I can't tell you. I got, I got nothing for you. So um, it's been a minute. Yeah, I thought about that and thought about the fact that a couple of my friends who hadn't had children when I left now have kids that are graduating college. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Avery's, go, Avery's going to college the year after next, Eric. Yeah, mine's a, mine's yeah, a sophomore right at Santa Cruz. Jeez, yeah, they, it's it happens before you know it. And, um yeah, yeah, no, that's, you know, I was happy for her. I'm super proud of her. That's where she wanted to go. She did apply to, to my alma mater and Jason's alma mater, but really wanted to go to Santa Cruz and that fit her better. And, and that's where she got in. And I was 
as I told her, I said, it's not my four years. My four years are gone. So you go where you want to go. So you're not going to hurt my feelings if that's where you want to go. And so she's, uh, she's there. And then, you know, just raising my son out and out in Memphis with his mom and, and stepdad. And, and that's a, that's a lot when you're on the road a lot, but yeah. it's, he's a great kid and super proud of him too. So yeah, life's good. I yeah. can't complain. They still pay me to watch basketball. <laughs> and when they tell me to stop, I'll, figure something else out to do, but uh, hopefully that doesn't stop anytime soon. I was thinking the same thing about that, Eric. How, how old's your son now? He's got to be getting up there. He's 12. Wow. Uh, I hate Come him. On. I hate him because he's taller, better <laughs> looking, a better athlete. And That's not a challenge. That's not being no, taller. It's really not. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. Um, yeah, his his mom is 5'10", so he got some of those genetics, and I the ones that skipped me because my dad was over six, so – uh, yeah, I am vertically challenged. Uh, I was told by somebody that they appreciated though the fact that I didn't say I was six feet tall. I was like, I'm like five nine, five ten. I'm like, at least you're honest. I'm like, yeah, with, with shoes even. So, um, no, he's great. It's it's a it, he's doing everything that you know boys do. He plays basketball. He plays baseball. Um, played football. Kind of gave up on that, but you know, it's it's fun raising a little athlete. It's also a chore because you're you're running them to every known practice whatsoever. Um, but it's great. He's, he's awesome. I've gotten to spend more time with him this year than ever. Cause uh, we homeschooled him for a year or two and just kind of figuring out what we want to do moving forward. And, and for me, it's been awesome. Uh, I, I get to, I get to spend the days with him when we're, when we're at home. And so that's, that's better because there were years where I felt like I never saw my kid with this crazy job that I have. And um, I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, things are, like I said, things are, things are good. <laughs> not, not the, season for the Grizzlies for the first time in you know four years they're they're gonna miss the postseason and or you know maybe even five I think if, if you had the COVID year where they they went to the bubble but you know look they, they, they these things happen you can't control them um you know it's 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 a tough deal to watch guys go down it, it, it was almost like laughable at one point where in four nights you lost four guys like for long periods of time you're like okay come on <laughs> this is now absurd. It went John ja Morant, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, and then Jake LaRavia. And in the midst of that, Luke Kennard got banged up too. And you're just like, what are we doing? So, I mean, it's, they, they are, they have a just serious possibility of, of having 50 different starting lineups this year. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. They're already at 41 and tonight, maybe 42. How is it with the fan base out there? Because Memphis, you know, historically, not as bad as the Kings, but certainly has struggled much with, with exceptions. And then, you know, you had the grit and grind and all that. And that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then jaw comes in and it's, right. it's just, you guys are the, the next big thing. And, and I'm curious how the fan base is out there. Cause I, I, you know, you try to transfer it out here and think and go, well, I, I, I feel like if it was our fan base, They'd be like, well, the bright side is that, you know, right. everyone's heard it once. So uh, if you're looking through uh, rose colored glasses, it's all right. Uh, we are currently uh, right smack there in the lottery. And maybe it's one mm -hmm. of those. We get a, a beautiful lottery pick. We have no business being in based on the talent. Everybody comes back healthy next year. And now all of a sudden it's back off to the races. Has that helped kind of buoy them or is it all, you know, everyone's freaking out? I wouldn't say they're freaking out. The difference is that there we've battled since I've been there and still battling it. Um, the city's relationship with the university of Memphis, and it's not really a battle in our eyes. I mean, we're, we're it's two different, it's two different games. The college game and the pro game are just different. And there are still people that, that push back with resistance fewer now than when we started but they just say, oh, I, I'm only a college basketball fan. And my response is, why? Like, why don't you, if you like basketball, why don't you like basketball played at the highest level? If you like basketball, why don't you like the best players in the world? You can like college. I, I'm all for it. I love college basketball. But it's just different. It's played different. The, the, the talent level is different. So there's still a little bit of that. I think people, the frustrating thing for people is that, it, it, they, there's a chip on their shoulder there. And I don't mean it in a, you know, to be super negative, but everybody just goes, you know, it, it's Memphis. We can't have nice things. It's kind of their phrase. Mm -hmm. And you lose an Adams at the beginning of the year and, and you lost Brandon Clark last year. 
and obviously the stuff that happened with Ja last year was a year where, where people truly in January believed they had a chance to win a championship. And it was probably the first time in this franchise's history where, where not just people that were looking through the world through grizzly colored glasses, people in the league. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people came up and said, yo, you, you guys might win the whole thing. And, and my response to that, because it was happening at midway, like, let's pump the brakes just a smidge. It's, it's game 42. There's a lot that can happen. And unfortunately, that turned to be true. Um, when you lost Adams and Clark last year, that was massive. That was how the Lakers just had a distinct advantage on the interior. Obviously, LeBron's always an advantage. And um, they just couldn't, when you got stops, you couldn't get the ball. And, and that made a huge difference in a couple of those games. And that's all it takes in the playoffs, as, as you guys know. So um, I think they're, they're looking at this year as there's nothing they could have done about this. They're getting to look at players. You know, we're getting to look at a young man named GD Jackson that was on a two way deal after being a second round pick who right now should be playing for North Carolina. He reclassified and this has been the, the bright side of it. Vince Williams, one of the Grizzlies that, that wasn't playing a lot, finally got a chance to play and showed he's capable of having a roster spot and contributing. Those are the positives, but the negatives are there are nights you go out and you just, you don't have it. And, these these guys fight, and, and I think the city respects that because the one thing that everybody says, you guys compete every night, which we're closing games, though, with four guys that started the season in the G League against the Clippers who are closing it with four Hall of Famers. Mm. It, it's a hard it's a hard mountain to climb. So, um, yeah, they, they've been okay with it, but, I mean, I think everybody now is curious as what you're going to do with the draft pick because apparently all these people are draft experts that read all the boards, and they say, well, there's no bigs at the top of the draft. So do we need to add another wing or do we need to trade the pick? And I'm like, you know, there are guys that have keys to their offices that that make really nice salaries that are paid to make those decisions. Why don't you just relax and let them do that? Because so far they've done a pretty good job since they've taken over. Yeah. Eric, I'm thinking about your, the, the lot that they're set here. And to me, it does still seem like a good spot to be in. You guys were the two seed last year. You know that the West is better this year. Kings are experiencing some of that where they were the three seed and now they're, kind of scuffling in that six, seven, eight, nine range. Um, but, you know, getting Jaw back and Bain and Jackson and Smart to begin next year with the guys that you're developing, do you feel like, even as good as the West was this year, that they could just bounce right back to, to maybe even the top half of the uh, of the Western Conference next year? That's, you, you sure hope so. You can see it potentially if you, if you, you know, if you want to look positively at everything, you can see it. They stay healthy. And, you know, they, they focus on the important things. The development of some of the young guys that I just mentioned will certainly be a benefit. The question is, can you get the guy to replace Steven Adams? Because when you look at the upper level teams, obviously we know Denver with Nikola Jokic and, and they've won a championship. You look at the interior for Minnesota and they have those two big guys. And I would expect this injury for Carl Anthony Towns isn't a long lingering thing. But when you have Towns and Gilbert, that's, that's a big factor down there. For you guys, you have, to me, the most versatile big man going. And uh, this was a guy that when he came out of Gonzaga, I was hoping the Grizzlies would get. There were a lot of mock drafts that had him coming to Memphis. And I'm like, if we were able to get Tomata Sabonis, that would be a massive step in the right direction. Unfortunately, Orlando grabbed him first. He went to OKC. We all know the rest is history. Um, You guys have that. And then you look even with Oklahoma City and Chet Holmgren is not a traditional big man. They're a big basketball team. We just saw them. They don't have a guy on their roster under 6'4". And if you think Lou Dort plays like he's 6'4", you're kidding yourself. He's built like a fire hydrant. And maybe Isaiah Joe, one of their guys coming off the bench. But they are so long and so athletic and so deep. And there's talk that they could shop, you know, a couple of those guys that that who knows what their role is going to be that have incredible value and get even better. So it's, it's, it's hard because Dallas gets Derek lively. And so that piece in the middle is, is lacking right now because what Steven Adams gave the Grizzlies, it was a couple of things. One, um, just a monster screen setter that frees up your, your ball handling, you know, playmaking point guard. Who's as athletic as anybody in the league when he's healthy Two, it, it, it freed up Jaron Jackson to go just roam and, and do what he does, which is fine, fine shots, block them, get in passing lanes, and he won the Defensive Player of the Year because of it. Um, he was your best pick-and-roll defender because of his size, and he was your best offensive rebounder 
And then you lost your second best in Brandon Clark. So that really hurt the team. Now, Clark, we'll see how he comes back from the Achilles. All signs seem to say that he's going to be just fine, but you know, that's a, that's a scary injury. So um, that's where the, the, the debate right now lies for them is how to, if you get back to the top, who's the big man that's going to replace. So there's some guys in free agency that they're supposedly willing to make a run at. There's some guys in the draft that they would like to make a run at potentially. Um, but, you know, Steven Adams is one of the kind. He was our kind of our the glue that brought it all together. And um, they, they just felt like he may not get back to that level again. And they had a chance to get off some of the money. And so they traded him to Houston. And we'll see what happens there. We are out of time. Never enough time with Eric. Uh, by the way, uh, Alex Lynn from Marcus Smart. I will uh, send that through. I think it works. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, works for both teams. No, dis- no disrespect no? to the great Alex Lynn out of Maryland, the Ukrainian. Uh, body Ukrainian down low. It, it, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I think that trading Marcus Smart to you guys for just about anybody not named uh, Sabonis or Fox would, would not be, or Murray. Um, that would, that wouldn't be, uh, I, I, first of all, I don't know if I can even talk about that. I'm probably going to get yelled at. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. <laughs> careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Careful. Uh, let's hit that dump button. Right yeah. There. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. We'll, we'll but, walk uh, it back. Yeah. We'll walk it back. Okay. Uh, you know, all right. on jokes, but yeah, no, Marcus is, Marcus is a terrific player. We miss him. Well, you're a terrific uh, guy. We miss you. Look at that. I miss you guys. I miss seeing you. You miss me buying pizza for you so I can watch the game with you. Luigi's was really good in that studio, wasn't it? Yeah, especially when I had to drive like half hour out of my way <laughs> so I could open well, the door. Well, you know, we had what you needed, a, a TV to watch the game. Eric used to look through the little window over at Madison and be like, let me see the pizza. <laughs> okay. Make sure it's there. Get in here. Yeah. <laughs> this is not true. Uh, hey, lie to people constantly now we have you had, to, you had to flash a 20 dollar bill too <laughs> <laughs> well uh we'll see you tonight jason well at least yes. uh always good to uh to see you uh, and uh, have you look at our smiling faces on the side of buildings and uh good luck to you bad luck to your team and uh, we'll talk to you soon <laughs> <laughs> keep it up boys i love you all right thank love you. you too thank you see ya. that's eric house it's my voice of the grizzlies we'll take a break when we come back who's hot who's not we'll recap three in the key we got to do a three in the key, Jason. We got to do a lot of stuff in this next segment. So everybody take a deep breath because it's just a one minute break. We're coming back right after this. What's the missing piece for the 49ers? Which names will they add during free agency? Whether it's in season or off season, the coverage never stops. Get the latest 49ers news on Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi Fi all over the house. Even in my hiding spots. Ha! Found ya. How? That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment best food best service and the best action that's capital casino for more information on tournaments and gaming check out their website at capital-casino.com and please remember to gamble responsibly 1-800-GAMBLER with rt painting our name says it all we are a reliable and trusted commercial and residential painting company serving the sacramento area since 1998 employee owned our attention to detail is second to none put our decades of experience serving our community to use for you get a free quote today call us at 916-900-8112 that's 916-900-8112 or go online to rtpainting.com that's rtpainting.com rt painting your trusted and reliable painting contractor of choice what's hot and what's not brought to you by american energy heat and air making the uncomfortable comfortable head to americanenergyair.com to find out more what's hot yeah hot real hot and what's not it's not good brought to you by american energy heating and air sacramento's complete heating and cooling company and second opinion partner wait a minute did i have a brain freeze does the voice guy say what's hot yeah what? i just noticed that yeah he just changed it he just changed it oh. it's been like that forever yeah. right 
And I just noticed he says, what's hot? And then I say, who's hot? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that. Yeah, we did that on purpose. Yeah. Who's hot, Chris? Victor Webanyama. Yeah, he is. Is he? Yeah. Last night, he finished with 33 points, 15 rebounds, 7 blocks, and 7 assists. He also had the go-ahead dunk and a block near the end of the game to seal the Spurs 122-115 to overtime win over the Brooklyn Nets. You know what a real brain twisty question is if you have time to go down the deep dive? Not talk, you know, the other day it was like, hey, if you could if everybody was uh entering the draft in the entire NBA, like where would Victor Women Yama go? We all agreed top five, maybe, maybe number one. Like any you can draft anybody. He might be it. But where does Victor Women Yama rank right now when it comes to NBA players? Is he top twenty? No. I don't think so. Well, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but just for funsies, Victor Wembanyama this season. So forget, doesn't matter that he's 20, doesn't matter it's his right. rookie year. This is just as a player. 21 points, 10 and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, three and a half blocks. On 33%, three-point percentage, he's making just under two a game. I mean... <sighs> I, I'll have to look, but he's got to be around. I mean, j- just the defense. The defense is what separates him. His offensive game isn't even there yet, which is scary. That's so you got 21 points, which in this day and age is, you know, he's been like, hey, he scored 20 points yeah. a game, but, but he is averaging 10 and a half boards. Um, I don't know what it is now. I remember looking back a while ago when Sabonis, I think Sabonis is right around 20 a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was 50th yeah. in scoring. It was, uh, I in looked at that exact same thing last week, and he was 54th. I looked okay, at the so exact same worse. thing you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just... Again, he, good, great. I'm not even... But I would say top 20 now. No, I wouldn't say he's top 20. He's about as good a rookie we've seen since maybe LeBron James. Yeah, yes. But, I mean, like, do the centers right now. Just the center yeah. position. The, 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 I think the thing that... Uh, we're not talking future. Yeah. yeah. Right no, nope, you're right. You're Sabonis right. Sabonis has had a better year. Sabonis and Jokic have had better years. Indeed, sure. right? Has Embiid or was, has. right? I mean, you know. Well, okay. Do you know who's had a better year? Wemby Yama or Davis? Davis. Okay. I think you could go to like Bam and Shangun. I mean, there's Bam, Shangun. Uh, All of a sudden, is he the seventh center? So then you go, to, you even done forwards and guards. So, I mean, I again, I the future is. He right. might be one. I don't disagree with you. I think what's bothering me in the conversation is I don't know. I just hope I'm rating his defense and block shots properly because he's dominant when it comes to block shots. Mm-hmm. He should be the defensive. I think he should be the defensive player of the year this year. Okay. And I maybe what it, I mean, I know who the leader is, but what if there was somebody that was, let me try to pick a player. Uh, that's not fair. But what does the steal leader mean to you? That that's yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, he, not much, right? No, but he all. But in, he, in addition to the massive amount of blocks he has, he also has seventy six steals. He's gonna have a hundred steals on the year. No, I know, but I so part of defense could be steals or sure. blocks. And, and I don't right. want to say blocks are irrelevant. That's right. not my point. But like a steal leader, I don't know that that ever gets really. Look what they do for a team. So if you're like, right. if there was one that was out and away from everybody, but was averaging 15 and five in whatever category, you're like, that's really good. But what does the steals do for Which you? is strange when you think about it, because on the surface, steals should be, should matter more than blocks. Because you take possession. Because you took possession. You could be blocking the ball out of bounds. Block the ball out of bounds. You can block. But then also what you. You can block to the, the uh, right back to the, right back to the other team and they score. Right. A steal, you took possession. Right. But the other thing, too, that's almost impossible to quantify is, okay, but it's not just the three and a half blocks a game. It's the shots he's correct. adjusted and the way offenses have yeah. to change around him per game. Yeah, correct. And, again, now we're back to yeah. there's more players on his team, but it's not really translating into that many wins. I guess the only thing I would say, if I was making an argument, is that when Minyama and Sabonis, it's pretty much a draw when it comes to points per game. Mm-hmm. I think Webby's got him by like five tenths of a point. Whatever. I'll call that a draw. Sabonis has him by three rebounds. And Sabonis has him by like five assists. That's that's huge. Yeah. 
Weben Yama has him by like almost three blocks a game. He has more steals than he has. Mm-hmm. He's, he's an 80% free throw shooter. DeMontis Sabonis right now is better than Victor Weben Yama. Correct. He is. It's not that big of a difference, no. though, I think, in the big scheme. Of right. Things. And they're just a different type. Yeah. Different type of players. I mean, I was really thinking when they played, I go, I want to see how Sabonis. He bullied. He, he absolutely he bullied. Totally bullied he took his lunch. Yeah. You're 100% right. Well, who's not then, Chris? Nikola Jokic? What? What? Has this ever happened? He had a good game for an average player, 16 points, 11 rebounds. He also shot 6 of 16 from the field in the Nuggets, 107 to 105 loss in the Mavericks. Trash. Just trash. I, I love that Sabonis, by the way, I, I I did say this on Friday, that that was my big alarm game for Sabonis' double-double streak to stop. Uh-huh. And he and he didn't have the assist, but then again, it, it, he had two assists, which was like half of the team's made baskets, yeah. basically. That, was it. That, that would be a very difficult team to get a triple-double on. Very difficult. And we got to recap that, by the way. Three in the key, Kings, Knicks. This would be very interesting. We had a number of things that were uh, – Keys to the game, if you will. Let's see how we did. John Tesh take it away. And we'll run through these here real quick. Jason Ross. Okay, we asked because we knew it would be a low-scoring game. How many points would the Kings score? Dave, you said 105. I said 116. Chris said 110. The correct answer was 91. Dave, you were the closest. I nailed it by 14 off. <laughs> we were highlighting Josh Hart and his rebounding ability along with Sabonis. We wanted their rebounds. Dave, you said 10 for Hart, 15 Sabonis. I said 14 Hart, 16 Sabonis. Chris said nine heart, 13 for Sabonis. Hart had 13. Sabonis had 14. Mm. They're all in the general area there. Lastly, random stat. Dave, you, you said there would be a technical foul on Tibbs. There was not. There was not. I said that there would be triple doubles by both Sabonis and Hart. That did not happen. That did not happen. But Double doubles, though. Chris Verlot said Uh-oh. Harrison Barnes would score 14 or more points. Oh, he had 16. He had 16. That's more than 14. And they fall to 16 and 4. And Harrison Barnes scores 15 or more points. Good stat. How about that? Would you like to do one for today? Let's do one for today. re rack La, 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 la. All right, Dave, how about you pick a category uh, for us to start things off today? All right. Uh, let's go with, uh, I was going to say a rando, but... We let have me, Rando to finish. Let me make sure I got Rando. it. Rando. Uh, okay. Guy not named Jaron Jackson or Desmond Bain. That is, who will be the third high scorer on this team? In other words, I, I, non-Jackson or Bain. Non-Jackson or Bain. Who, score. Who will have the, the I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Gigi Jackson. Okay. Who will probably have 47. we we'll go with Luke Kennard. Luca Kennard. Luke Kennard. And Chris for a lot for the win. Wait, who can't we pick? pick? You can't, can't pick, pick Desmond Bain or Jaron Jackson. So outside of them, who's the Grizzlies' leading scorer? Uh oh, GG Jackson. Yeah, I don't wow. want to be the same one as you. Wow, I am piggybacking Chris all over the place. All right, Chris. Kind of weird. Uh, Chris, how about you pick a category for the second of our three in the key? Combined points of Kevin Herter and Keon Ellis. Oh. Dave? I will say 18. I'm going to say 14. I'm going to say 16. I really, I need Kevin Herter to just get, let's break out. You know what, dude, go for 30 tonight. Did you see, I think it was his first shot attempt. It was really early in the game where literally the description G Man said there was, I mean, like nobody say, near him from the near corner. Yeah. So not only wide up, I think the closest defender was literally in the paint and they had the decision to make like, well, I can close out, but there's no way I'm going to get there in time. So I'm just going to stay in the just paint. Just let him. Herter caught it, dribbled, <sighs> took a breath, yes. set his feet. Read and the then, comics. And missed it. The Vivek was closer to him than yes. the nearest defender. And yeah. he, I, I was like, God uh, dang, dude. Come all on. Right. Random stat for you, Dave. Random stat for me. Um, oh, give me a 40 burger for Desmond Bain. Good points for Bain. I'm going to say for the second straight game, the Kings are going to outscore their opponent from the line. They hadn't done it for 17 in a row, and now they've did it against the Knicks. Oh, we'll see if they can do it two in a row. Chris, God, you went there. Keegan Murray will have four or more. Three points. Please do. 
God, there were a couple against the next two where he, uh, it was. They needed him. They needed him. And they just a big shot. And, and by the way, am I wrong in saying this? When you go back and you look at that next game, like all credit to them, defense, all. Kings missed more than their share of wide Absolutely. open shots, too. Absolutely. Like, what is that? Are you just like, is that like two for flinching? You're just waiting like you think there's going to be good yeah. defense? Yeah. All right. Uh, Frankie's in the green room right now, powdering up. He will join us. Sacktown Sports Kings insider. Yeah. The NFL's leading rusher plays here. The handoff to McCaffrey walks in the end zone. Handoff to McCaffrey. Takes it right down to the goal line. He does his thing again. McCaffrey goes in motion right. Backwards pass led by Juszczyk. A block there. Hurdles the man. 10-5. Touchdown! C M C. You can hear all of Christian McCaffrey's touchdowns on your home for 49ers football. Sacktown Sports. Savings. Now that's speaking the Lowe's language. And with my Lowe's rewards, your savings just keep coming. Save money with member-only offers and earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards just for you. Because Lowe's knows you earned it, literally. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Rewards. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. Attorney Joe Cordell. Business owners and professionals face special challenges in divorce court. In addition to everything else going on, they have to contend with allegations that they are earning more than they are, coupled with claims on their business or practice itself. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters. And that's why it's so important to hire someone that has those skills. 500 Capital Mall, Suite 2120, Sacramento, California, 95814. CordellCordell.com. Paid for by Cordell and Cordell. For a percent. Decision crafted performance. The decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at AcuraOfStockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and AcuraOfStockton.com. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave for American Energy Heating and Air with a question. Have you recently had a technician diagnose your HVAC system and you were a bit surprised at how much it cost? Or did something seem off about their quote? Because at American Energy, they take pride in giving you honest, straightforward solutions to get that system up and running. Have their qualified technicians come out and give you a free second opinion. It's free. You got nothing to lose but some dollars off of that original quote. They're making the uncomfortable comfortable. They've been doing it since 1981, serving the greater Sacramento area A plus with the better business bureau that's why they keep having customers coming back for more and more and more you can call them and set that appointment at 916-520-9990 that's 916-520-9990 or americanenergyair.com Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jake Owen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by California Army National Guard, Major Wood Home Furnishings, and RVs of Sacramento. If you're looking to get a new car, you could really cut expenses by bundling your car and renter's insurance with Progressive. Sure, you love your old car, but you know it's not normal to give instructions on how to open the window. It should be self-explanatory, but it's not. And notice how when you're in other people's cars, you can feel cushion in the seats? That's pretty nice, right? No, it's just normal. So bundle your renters and car insurance with Progressive and put the savings toward a new car. It's time. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Not available in all states. Go for it. Take your face. The only thing worse than a pitcher running out of gas on the mound is your old phone running out of storage for your photos in the stands. Goodbye, home run. Switch to Verizon and get a great deal on a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage for all the ballpark picks you want. Just trade in your iPhone, any model, in any condition, so you'll feel like you're winning. 
even when your team's not. Trade in any iPhone in any condition for a great deal on iPhone 15 Pro with Unlimited Ultimate and get iPad and Apple Watch SE with eligible service plan. Only on Verizon. Capital Casino conveniently located on 411 at North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. From the power business technology Toshiba Studios. Your home for Kings basketball for over 25 seasons. No look, Bibby to Weber down the lane, flying jam. There's your play of the night right there. It's inside is Sabonis, a two-hand rip, a brilliant pass from Pierre and Fox. KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sundown Sports. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone. And then Boom. with Jason Ross. No, he did it. Yes, he did. Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. <laughs> We reported earlier, or shared the report, that the longtime PA announcer for the Giants since the new stadium opened. No longer new. Uh, yeah, no longer new. Rennell Brooks Moon and the Giants have parted ways. And we talked about how the statement was weird that the Giants put out because part of it was like after long negotiations. Mm-hmm. Well, Ann Killian just put out an article in the Chronicle about an hour ago. It's like, that says friends of Brooks Moon say she's been forced out. Oh, which means she was forced out. Yes, um, because she declined comment. I've seen that game played before. <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna like freak out. I understand the big scheme of things. Whoever the PA announcer is doesn't matter. Well, I, I shouldn't say doesn't matter. Wow, I, I, I know shots of shots of smoke, right? I, I, what I'm saying is like on the field on the court yeah i get it i get it but the game experience is a huge part of it she was so pop is so popular also it doesn't count against the cap and i'm pretty sure whatever the wage difference was and what she was it's gotta be nothing you know in the in baseball terms it is as i wear my giants hat Mm mm-hmm it is incredibly difficult to be a Giants fan these days. Like, honestly, at this point, I'm a Giants fan because I was born a Giants fan. I'm a Giants fan because I am loyal, and that's been my team my yeah. entire life. I think Varon Zaidi sucks. I hate their ownership and everything about their ownership. Larry Kruger is a we- or Larry Kruger. Larry, uh, where the C? I can't remember his name. Larry, what's his face? Is a wiener. Uh, their owner is a super wiener. You know what I'm talking yeah, about, right? I can't, I can't, can't remember either. his last name. Um, like, they're just weenies, dude. They are weenies. And I, I think that, like, the giant slogan is about, we're about five minutes away from the giant slogan being, what do you do, go to an A's game? <laughs> like, that, that, and that's pretty much where they're at. I Larry know Frankie's Bear. on hold. Larry Bear, thank yeah. you. You can All join, right. uh, become a Yankees fan like Frankie and I. <laughs> Joining us right now. From uh, from Sacktown Sports, our Kings insider, Frankie Clicks. Good morning, Frankie. Good morning, guys. Uh, I'm hearing Christopher Lott in the background here. I don't want to listen in on his conversation. Oh, but- he must be editing something and have the wrong thing potted up. Hey, Chris, you got to – he can hear you. He's, he's I turned my mic off. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but no one knew oh, until sorry. you guys brought it up. Oh, sorry. Well, I, it's in my ear. Sorry. Can but I just no, say – you brought I'm it. He sorry, brought it. I've been at a at a bad time here for a Giants yeah. little little event session. I'm I'm hearing the same thing though from friends of mine that have grown up Giants fans. And again, I've gone to you know anyone that's been in the area has gone to plenty of games at Oracle Park or Pacfell Park, AT and T Park over the years. And yeah. it's gonna be a different vibe without Renee there for sure. It's, it's definitely uh some some disappointing news to begin the week here. It just weans. <laughs> I need to find it. You know what? Maybe I need to find a secondary team to root for. Yankees. No, I can't do that. Oh, I why? can't. I'm sorry. The other league. That's no. It's got to be like like oh the Dodgers. Come on now. I, 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 the I think water's what, fine. I think it would have to be like I, I, I think right now the most likely candidate would probably be the Rays. Why? Because the it can't, the Rays. Why? Okay, because it can't be okay. First off, it can't be like a tent pole team like the Yankees. Obviously, the, the Dodgers. I feel like it'd be but the A's. 
I can't I can't root for anything John Fisher has anything to do with. They're stupid. It would have to be like the Rays are like they're competitive, but the they, Rangers they have Boach. That's hopping on the bandwagon. The Rays are pretty good. The Rays is just brutal. Like going from maybe the most beautiful ballpark in in baseball or sports to the drop is that's quite a significant drop off. Well, good thing I'm not going to any of their games. <laughs> I'm just going to root from afar. But you know they do the most with the least. They're perennially competitive. Like who hates the Rays? Like are the Rays hateable? They're just the Rays. Um, I mean, if you watch enough Yankees Rays games yeah. over the years, you, I, there, there was too. a whole. I think Kevin Cash had this this time where he said he got a bunch of like arms in the stable. I think that can throw ninety five plus, and yeah. he, that was like a threat. To, there's been some drama between them, but yeah, okay. I, I think you can't hate the Rays if you're uh, from you know yes. if you're from the fan base. All right, I think I got it, and then we'll move to Kings because it's got to be I, like I I kind of got to go to the AL then. Yeah. Okay, um, what about okay? What about the Mariners? Like, is like there the Mariners. is there anything that can we hate? I mean, I get okay. That's a Seattle team, so there's a little, you know, Fine. Kings left over there. But well, they were the Kings though of of the MLB as far as like they had the longest drought. They had a longer drought than the Kings. I think they had a 21 year, 2021 20, yeah. year playoff drought, and they just snapped that a year or so ago. And they didn't win a playoff game. I don't think past that wild card round. But I mean, that's a team that makes sense. But yeah. I don't think you're leaving the Giants, Dave. I don't think you're, this is all. Come on, you're not leaving the Giants. I, I like Julio Rodriguez a ton. I love the color scheme. They, they're, I love it's the, about the color. Their 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 gear looks sick, sick. And like I went to a, you know what I went to a Mariners game last yeah, summer. I went to one more Mariners Mar- fan. I went to more Mariners games last summer than Giants games. See, there you go. There's your team. Yeah. Okay. Station partners. We have station partners out there. Seattle Sports. They cover the Mariners. Yeah. So, Mike yeah. Sock, Brock, all those yeah. guys. Let's go. That's a Bonneville <laughs> outfit. Might Let's, be onto something. Okay. All right. So, uh, hey, Frankie. Uh, the Kings, um, I want to know, cause I, I hope you uh, have been sleeping and, and aren't going to be biased by our conversation, but on an enjoyability scale from one to 10, give me your personal ranking for Saturday's game and why, uh, um, it is like the, is the, is one or zero being like very disappointed yes. an awful game. Uh, I'd say I'm probably like in the seven range just because. Losses that we've seen from this team before. This is just a, was not one of those games that measures up. Sure, the offense was not great, but I think you have to credit the New York Knicks defense that I mean they held up their end of the deal. They're second in the NBA in opponent points per game, and it was it wasn't really a walk in the park for them on offense either. They had to work for whatever they got as well. I mean, Jalen Brunson was really just their only uh, focal point. The guy that just was killing the Kings late killed them all night long. And I think if you're going to lose to a team like that way and play a very physical brand of basketball and you're matching it, something that Demonis Sabonis pointed out after the game, he was happy to see from those guys that they match that physicality. It's not like one of those games against a team like the Hornets or the Pistons or, you know, like a team like the Grizzlies coming in tonight. Like a loss like that would be against a sub-500 team. This is a really good team in the Knicks and, and one of the best defenses in the league. So I think if the Kings lost 120 to 95, it'd be a little disappointing. But um, it was a game that a couple wide-open threes, I mean, Keegan Murray and Kevin Herter had several open threes as more at the beginning of the game, it didn't fall, and it's one of those games, one of those nights for the offense. I think that it's one of those nights that doesn't happen too often. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Kings bounce back with the big offensive performance tonight. Yeah, I'm with you, Frankie. I mean, being there, you could. T- I mean, it was just the way the officials called it. It was football, like it was so physical. I didn't feel like the Kings backed down from it, but I guess when I left the arena, I was figuring, why couldn't they have performed better in it? And part of it has to be the Knicks. That is a good defense, number two in the league. But I think you're right. I thought they had a, a decent amount of open looks, and it just the offense. It, it nothing was easy all night long. And I know they got caught up in the physical nature, but I was a little surprised that they, they we never really got a lot of look of what it normally looks like for the Kings offensively. Yeah, the, the pace to me is really what stuck stuck out a lot too. Like I think in those wins we saw against the Lakers and Bucks, games the Kings really kind of took off and, and ran away with late. I mean, I'm looking at the fast break points. The Lakers, it was 16 to six. They won that game, 18 to five against the Bucks. The Knicks slowed them down. They leveled the score. It was 12 to 12 fast break points. And I think the Kings, a large part of their identity is getting out and running and, and pushing the pace. And that's something that Mike Brown's talked about a lot at length. They always want this team to go faster and go, go, go. And last year, obviously, the offense was it was it was the best in the league in a bunch of different categories. But the NBA as a whole has taken a step forward in offense, which I guess is starting those conversations as far as the league looking into controlling that or whatever. There's a bunch of things that we all have seen reported or going on behind the scenes about 
Um, you know, trying to slow down the NBA's just incredible offense that's been going on for really all the teams in the NBA right now. But fast break wasn't there. The three balls weren't falling. And I think the Kings, we've seen that when the threes don't fall, they they really struggle. They're 8-19 eight, eight and 19 this year when they shoot under 35% from three. And um, it's just kind of like that blueprint. And that's kind of like that rule of 35% that I throw out a lot when I, when I write or I report on social media. I look there to see because if they shoot above 35%, they hold a 30 and nine record. That's a 77% winning percentage. So um, obviously New York Knicks, they are a defensive team tonight. You get to face a Memphis Grizzlies team that uh, they're going to be missing about a million people. It feels like, but they still grayed out well defensively, but uh, the Kings don't have too many consecutive losses where they really failed to, to make uh, those three. So uh, an interesting game for sure, a different kind of loss, but not one that I'm disappointed by, by any means. It was just a tough kind of gritty game. Frankie, I didn't like the way the refs let everything go in the fourth. Um, but up until then, I'm a big fan of play on. But I was saying to Jason earlier, I, I, I feel like that ref crew is a big reason why the Knicks won, simply because there's a lot of other crews out there that would not have let a lot of that go from the beginning. Do, do, you, do you agree that for the Knicks style, a lot of how they do during the various course of games is going to depend on whether or not they have a lenient crew like they did Saturday. Yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely a problem that the NBA is still going through. I mean, you're going to get a different, it goes the same thing with like baseball. You get a different strike zone for different umpires and basketball. You're going to get different, um, you know, officiating styles, different, you know, there's going to be different levels of play, different play styles. They're going to get a green light versus other nights. They aren't. I mean, the whistles definitely got put away for a bit the other night. I mean, I think that the play that really I still cannot wrap my mind around is when Demonis Savonis yeah. and Hartenstein is vote. It was like a wrap around tackle, just like taking him to the floor, take that. It was. It was. We were all really surprised on media row that nothing was called. Like I, I get it. You have to make a call one way and or the other way. And another play also that we were kind of trying to wrap our heads around was there was a couple fifty fifty balls that were um, called differently. Like the Knicks were in possession of one of them. Malik Monk and I believe Josh Hart are running for a loose ball. They both collide like simultaneously. No one's in clear possession. They call a foul on Malik. So I think, okay, that makes sense because the Knicks are in possession. Fine. I can live with that. But then on the other end of the floor, the same exact thing happens. They go for a loose ball again. I think it's Malik Monk and Josh Hart again, if not mistaken, on the Kings end. And they call, they call, I think, what was it, a jump ball? Yeah. So I, and that's when Malik's sitting on the bench, all surprised. And uh, I just am trying to kind of understand how that works and again that kind of goes the officiating crew i think and then i think you're right dave i think if it was a different crew maybe we see some different calls go a different way i'm not sure if it changes the result of the game but uh just those couple plays right there just we were kind of wrapping our heads around them and wondering why is it different on one and then the other it was really just kind of almost a complete copy of that first play but um i think the officiating played a role for sure i wouldn't say it, it determined the outcome of the game i think that the kings actually had a, a better night in the free throw line or they had more free throw attempts, if I'm not mistaken. So can't really point there too much. I think that the, the true reason was Jalen Brunson just mm -hmm. completely got whatever he wanted. And uh, the Kings had some late game breakdowns. They went two and a half, uh, last two and a half minutes, they didn't score a basket. So um, officiating wasn't fantastic, but I think there was a lot of things the Kings could have done to still come out on top. Frankie Cardicelli joining us for Sacktown Sports Kings Insider on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline. Frankie, uh, Dave and I were mentioning earlier in the show that a guy like Trey Lyles would help certainly on Saturday. Trey's going to help in a lot of games, um, but we know there's a little bit more to that injury. It looks like the Kings want to reevaluate him in a couple of weeks. What do you think his status will be as uh, we're almost here to the end of the season? Yeah, it's going to be at least a couple of weeks, I think, in the Kings. They've, they've been pretty guarded with with these players and their injuries. We still have yet to get a an update on Sasha Vizankov. The last we heard, uh, from the team. He was progressing well, and I think that we're about at that six-week mark for him, so I think we'll get an update on Sasha before Trey at this point, but it, it definitely it shortens the bench, and it gives the Kings a different look. I mean, they're having to lean on guys like Keon Ellis more, Chris Duarte with some spot minutes, um, which I think the Keon Ellis minutes have been really great for the Kings, but they're playing a smaller brand of basketball, not having to be able to come out there and even play small ball five in some situations, and that the Kings have played well in, in those certain situations, so um, I would imagine he'll be a guy that'll be in play for the final week or two of the season. And hopefully for a postseason that the Kings get to that point, it looks like they'll at least be in the play in territory, but um, they're going to take it easy with him and be protective because again, we are at that time of the year. And I guess you got to be, have to be thankful that it, it happens at a time like now where he is on a two week timeline for a reevaluation versus it being a, a longer term thing and closer to the end of the season, because 
they have a couple, I won't say easy games, because again, we know how these games go, but their next three opponents are all sub 500, and maybe that's a, a nice cushion, cushy part of the schedule the Kings can use while they're shorthanded to, to create some separation in the standings. But I think Trey Lyles is a guy who'll be back for them uh, near the end of the, of the season and hopefully into the play and in playoffs. Frank. Turn my microphone here. Frankie, uh, are you going to be there? Put you on the spot. Are you going to be there for uh, Coach Brown's uh, pregame availability? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if this has already been answered, please share it. But I'd be really curious, and I'd actually love it if, if nobody else did, if you asked. Um, the Keon Ellis play uh, out with Jalen Brunson. Br- uh, Brunson fakes the screen. Keon looks right. Uh, and and Brunson blows by him. You remember that play? Very well. Okay. I'd really like to ask Coach Brown about that play specifically, and I'd like somebody to ask him about that play specifically because I, I am curious. Does that speak more to Jalen, you know, <laughs> okie doke Keon and, and got him with a vet move, or I feel like that speaks a little more to – the back end communication of the Kings and the fact that last I checked, it's the responsibility of the defenders behind Keon to be vocal and communicate and to call out screens. And either Keon didn't trust that they would do that or they just don't do that. In other words, I feel like that doesn't happen if Keon Ellis trusts that, that that screen coming is going to get called out. I'm curious to see who dropped the ball on that from Coach Brown's perspective, unless that's been asked and you already know the answer. No, I mean, to my knowledge, it wasn't asked. You know, I, I think, think that'll so. definitely come up tonight, whether it's me or someone else will probably come up tonight for sure. But um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that you have to give kind of a hat tip to Keelan Brunson, who that's a veteran move and yeah. really sells that fake. Again, maybe it goes into Keon Ellis, who is still getting his feet wet and, and becoming a true NBA rotation player, a guy that is one of the Kings stronger on and off all defenders. Maybe it's just a lapse of judgment, just you know, feeling that screen coming, but it wasn't there. Is that that much of a sold fake? But I think it kind of goes into communication, like you said. Um, again, in a building like Golden One Center, where it's a one position game with under a minute left, I'm sure it's just absolutely deafening. I don't know. It's, it's loud on media row, so I'd imagine it's even louder on the floor. But uh, being on the Kings end of the floor, too, I wonder if the coaching staff is trying to call that out, too, or the bench, and uh, just wasn't hurt. I mean, again, a lot of things go on in, in those kind of situations, and uh, you know, a lot of simulation going on as far as sounds go and everything like that. So maybe it just was a, one of those instances of welcome to the NBA moment from Jalen Brunson to Keon Ellis. But um, that's how I look at it. I think it's just kind of both. I think a little bit of an experience on Keon's part and no, or a little bit of three, I guess. A little inexperience on Keon's part to to bite down that fake. Jalen Brunson, his experience and, and the way that he sold it. And maybe the Kings not, not doing a, a great enough job of communicating on that play. That's what I saw on my end, at least. But um it's just something you don't see very every day. And I think that's something I think the Kings, a lot of things went to get to, them up to that point. Again, they didn't score the final two and a half minutes. They had their chances, but wouldn't say the game was lost in that very play, but obviously it put the game away. So um, a head scratching situation that hasn't happened too much this year, at least not in Kings games, but I think it was a little bit of everything, like you said. Frankie, one of my takeaways from the game, besides the physical stuff we've been talking about, was actually Jalen Brunson. I, I mean, I guess two things can be true for the – bulk of the game I honestly thought the Kings who have been guilty of being bad defensively many times I thought they defended him pretty well I thought they were physical with him I thought Fox took his turns Ellis Davion uh, Malik I mean they'd get switches but it would go from uh, maybe Davion to Keon so you're like all right you still got a good favorable at least defender on him and at the end of the night on on a night where scoring was tough to get he nearly had half their points I, I was I honestly was really impressed by him I'd be curious if you thought they defended him well and just your thought on Brunson that night. Yeah, I think as far as one-on-one goes, like Keon Ellis, Darren Fox, I think they all did he had good stretches on him. I think that what really happened and how he hurt him the most is getting switched off of uh, defensive assignments, Brunson to get free and knock down a couple threes. I think he had a big third quarter. I think he scored mm-hmm. 12 or, or 15 in that quarter. But, um, yeah, I don't think I look at it as far as guys are just getting, like, cooked or getting beat one-on-one or anything like that. It just was, you know, the Knicks are very physical. They said a lot of picks and, uh, Brunson got free on switches a lot, and that's kind of been a trend with the Kings this year as far as their their defense really has not uh, adapted well to, to switches. I think, I think that's one of the big reasons why Kevin Herter has found himself out of games a lot late in games or after the after the first quarter because opposing defenses do hunt him on switches, and I think that's kind of happened for a couple of players in the Kings this year. And, again, you do have your, your defenders like De'Aaron Fox and Keon Ellis, who uh, I would say, and Davion Mitchell, those are your guys that are very good on ball defenders. And um, 
I mean, the Knicks did what they could to get Brunson free, and he knocked him down. You got to tip your cap to him again. I mean, he knocked down some pretty tough shots. Uh, the shots that he, they did make in one-on-one situations, like those are not easy baskets. Like fall away jumpers, falling to one side. Brunson was knocking those down, uh, beating guys off the dribble on one-on-one. Like he was earning those points. There were no gimmies. And I think against a lot of other players in the league, those are stops. But Jalen Brunson, again, the guy who is here an MVP chance at games in Sacramento and the guy who, mm-hmm. who has obviously been an all and well-deserved honor at that. But um, I, I think that the Kings, again, like I agree with you, Jason, it, it wasn't a matter of them getting just completely beat on one-on-one situations. It just was a matter of getting free on those screens and Brunson made them pay. On one hand, Frankie, I was really proud. You know, I'm, We don't do moral victories, but I, I was – I was very proud of the team's effort Saturday and enjoyed this loss more than 98% of any other loss this year. It was the Belody, I think, the best Mm -hmm. loss of the year, maybe. (laughs) Also, the Pelicans, the Rockets, the Knicks, the Celtics earlier this year. If I were to say to you the Kings have a very difficult time with physical teams, and not everybody has a difficult time with physical teams, but... If that's their Achilles heel, and are, are, are you with me on that, or are we, we prisoners of the moment? Uh, I feel like the jury's still out on that. I mean, they're going to have a lot of tough games coming up that are going to be very physical, a lot of opponents that are around them in the standing. So I think this is their chance to prove if that's an Achilles heel or not. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think that it's – I think it's something they can improve on. I, they, I think having a physical edge is, is something this team could use. Demonis Sabonis obviously is one of the more physical players in the NBA, but – um, Harrison Barnes can get in the paint and absorb contact, but I think other guys have yet to prove they can handle that contact and be strong with the basketball in those situations or on the defensive end. But um, we're going to find out. We're going to see, David. We're going to see if this is that if that's going to be a problem or an Achilles heel as we we go through the final couple weeks of the season. But um, I think the fact that they did show up well and again, if, if some of those open threes fall, we could be having a different conversation. And that that really doesn't kind of go hand with that conversation, obviously. But the fact that those open threes could have fallen and that could have de- determined the win or loss, that kind of goes away from the physicality. But the Kings match that. I think that they match the physicality. Demonis Sabonis talked about it. Mike Brown did. But they're going to have more opportunities here against Dallas, Oklahoma City, down the closing stretch. They play Boston and they play New York again. So these two teams will meet again, I think, at Madison Square Garden in a week or two, and we'll see if it is an issue. But uh, I don't really read it that way, and you know, an answer will happen at some point. But, um, again, not, not a bad loss, in my opinion. Not a bad loss. That's Frankie Cardicelli, Sacramento Kings insider, joining us for a uh, Sacktown Sports, your home of the yeah. Sacramento Kings. Have a great time tonight. Hopefully, uh, you know, they're going up against a bad team with a bunch of people out at home before they go out on a road trip. Uh, let's hope they sweep aside some of these demons and get a W, Frankie, and we'll talk to you next week about it, plus other things. Thank you, brother. Let's hope so, guys. And Dave, like we said, Jason and I will have you on the Yankee set anytime you want, man. Yes. Well, and I saw him reply to the. You know, I tweeted I was gonna, I was taking the Mariners for a test drive, and he replied with a with a gif of. I mean, it's a good point. A gif of Sacramento's arson judge. Arson. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Arson judge. So, Sacramento. Very own. Yeah. Sa- the very own. Sa- Sacramento's own. Yeah. So uh, interesting. Support local, Dave. That's what you do. Thank you, Frank. You take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. He's farm to fork. Yes. City mm. of tree, the uh, city of tree. Mm. No, not not. It's a Sacramento native. That is a fact. Linden, no, he was born here. He was born in Sacramento. Ah, I still don't count it. That's a native. That's where he was born, baby. It's on the birth certificate. Yeah, I saw it. We'll take a break. We'll we co- when we come back. What to watch, and also. Get on the phone right now. Fifth caller, Live Nation has teamed up with Sackdown Sports for your chance to see Jeff Lynn's ELO Golden One Center October 23rd. All you got to do is hit up the Folsom Lake Honda hotline right now. 1 800 920 1140. Caller number five <laughs> to score that pair of tickets to pull up and go see ELO October 23rd. For more info, sacktownsports.com. We're right back. What to watch next. Our first year as the radio home of the San Francisco 49ers is one we will never forget. Going deep down the sideline for are you? He's got it, and he's gone. Ten, five, touchdown! San Francisco! Are you? Are you? Are you? Is on fire! Congratulations to the 49ers on a terrific year. 
and thank you for so many wonderful memories. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my hiding spots. Ha! Found ya. How? That's wall-to-wall -wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless bill and auto pay stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year, coach of the year, clutch player of the year, all-stars and all NBA performers. Plus, we got to light the beam. Here's a steal by Fox, a breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team, Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Folsom Lake Kia. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman in the KCRA3 Weather Center. Bright sunshine for Monday. Temperatures climbing into the low 70s with a light onshore breeze in the evening. Tuesday morning, we start in the upper 40s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA News and the KCRA app. Shop Folsom Lake Kia during their spring event and save big on your favorite models. You can even buy with zero down on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. Folsom Lake Kia.com. I lock up my Old Spice Fiji aluminum free dry spray to keep that 24 7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. It's like catching waves in Fiji. Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. My old spice is missing! No! Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. I mean, you could put that money towards concert tickets for your daughter to see that singer who sings about painful breakups. And one song will inspire your little beauty to break up with that beast she's dating, Brian. Instead, she'll date someone who's nice and worthy of her love, not someone who addresses you and your spouse as, bro. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, not available in all states. I'm Craig Ashton of the Injury Law Firm of Ashton & Price. Whether you've been injured on a bicycle, as a pedestrian, in a slip and fall, auto, Uber, Lyft, or big rig accident, you need Ashton & Price in your corner. When you call Ashton & Price, there's no chatbot telling you to hit three for accounting. You're greeted by a real live person who will immediately transfer you to an experienced attorney. The consultation's free, and there's never a fee until you win. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Ball four, take your base. The only thing worse than a pitcher running out of gas on the mound is your old phone running out of storage for your photos in the stands. Goodbye, home run. Switch to Verizon and get a great deal on a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage for all the ballpark picks you want. Just trade in your iPhone, any model, in any condition, so you'll feel like you're winning even when your team's not. Trade in any iPhone in any condition for a great deal on iPhone 15 Pro with Unlimited Ultimate and get iPad and Apple Watch SE with eligible service plan, only on Verizon. Don't you love an extra $100 in your pocket? Have a TurboTax expert file your taxes for you by March 31st to get $100 back instantly. Because no matter what moves you made last year, TurboTax makes them count. That means getting $100 back and 100% accurate taxes only from Intuit TurboTax. Must file by 331. Credit only applicable to federal filing fees with TurboTax full service. Offer can be modified or terminated at any time. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. 
With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation. And kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Capital Casino conveniently located on 411 North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. With the best in local sports. They just make it interesting, you know? It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. On Sattown Sports. Hey, remember Kevin Pitsnoggle, the uh, West Virginia player? Yeah. He's now an assistant high school principal in West Virginia. Bryce Drew. And he's coaching uh, Grand Canyon. That's right. Uh, let's... Is he still coaching Grand Canyon? Oh, I know, right? That yeah, that wasn't that. Uh... I did the dunk, and then there was a anger over the weekend. Was that Grand Canyon? I thought. I thought. Yeah, and I thought Dan Marley was I used to. God Sham God, mm-hmm. greatest name in NBA history, is now the Dallas Mavericks player development coach. Just going through some, some names. Um, let's see. Uh, Bo Kimball, my, my second favorite college player of all time, uh, business consultant in Philadelphia. God, you know what's cool about that is he's Good a business. He's a business consultant. So in my mind, that tells me, like, and you never know, you never know, because some people are like, Mm-mm. honestly, probably, well, I won't say top ten, but. I would love to get him on the show. That's one of those ones where I'd like to have an hour with Bo Kimball. Mm-hmm. And I would 100% understand, like, I would a billion percent understand if Bo Kimball was like, you know, that that was a great time in my life, but also the most painful. So I don't really like to, I'd be like, dude, I get it. But, and by the way, for those of you under 40, uh, Bo Kimball was on the Loyola Marymount team uh, teammates with Hank Gathers, who is my favorite college basketball player of all time, uh, who um, uh, suffered a, a, a heart issue and died uh, shortly after, was maybe the best player in the country. Um, I think he led the league in scoring two years in a row, and I want to say he led the league in NCAA in scoring and rebounding uh, that year. Just a total tragedy. Bo was his counterpart on the team, his pick to Jordan, if you will, mm-hmm. and uh, Loyola Marymount had one of the most impressively unrealistic, crazy runs in the NCAA tournament. He's completely throttled the defending champion, Michigan Wolverines, at one point, finally succumbed to Duke, I think it was. And Bo, as a uh, homage to uh, his, his, his teammate, shot the first free throw uh, of every free throw he took left-handed, and I believe he was 100%. It was just such a cool. Well, it was a horrifically terrible story right. that ended up putting a lump in your throat, and uh, and now he's yeah, because not all these guys go on to have amazing NBA careers. No, and, and, and in fact, we've talked about that before. So often, you know, for every I don't know, Anthony Davis was great in the NCAA's, yeah. uh, but for every guy that stands out, there's and I mean no disrespect by this, but there's fifty. Sean May. Right. Sean May, you know, former king. Yeah. Made the NBA. Right. College players of the year, those kind of guys. Oh, like, oh wow. And then you're like, yeah, maybe a lottery pick, maybe a first or second round pick. And maybe. Then out of the league. Out of the league. Uh, I know he won it at least once, if not twice, but, you know, who was the last one? Luca Garza. Luca Garza was the man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Tyler Hansborough. You know, you know, and then whoever, who's the guy I always forget right now? He's about to put his second oh, straight. Uh, Zach Eady. Zach Eady. Now, who knows what he's going to do? But I would bet that he's at best going to be, uh, you know, a seventh, eighth, ninth man on the bench, journeyman type, which great. Good for you. Hell, Christian Leitner, who had a better career than any of the guys I'm talking about, but Christian Leitner in college, 
you either <laughs> you either loved him or passionately hated him. Yeah. And those days are like few and far between now where people come back for multiple, multiple years. But that's true. Yeah. And I love that was weirdly now looking back, I don't know what man as a young kid was Bobby Hurley Christian Later. Yeah. Oh, I love and I, but I get how you and LV came along. It was like, no, that you and Lee in Michigan, the Fab Five, all around the same time, pretty amazing time. You saw that picture of the Fab Five like about a month ago, uh-huh. yeah, all together. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> They're all so old yeah. now. And it's like, come on, man! I remember them coming in the league with the black socks, mm-hmm. with the short. The shorts were basically like their pants, dresses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just pants down to the socks. Ah, uh, get old. It's a blast. Uh, standings watch, if you will, and also let's take a look, more importantly, at the top ten in action. And I just remember, just to remind you, uh, with the Dallas buzzer beater against the Nuggets, there is now a effectively a three-way tie between the Kings, Mavs, and Suns. Now, the Kings are ahead on percentage points. They have one less win, but one less loss than both the Mavericks uh, and the Suns. The Kings, uh, two and a half back of the Pelicans, three and a half back of the L.A. Clippers. So when you look at who's in action tonight that we care about, uh, T-Wolves at the Jazz, eh. uh, Lakers host the Hawks, eh. the Hawks in the building two nights in a row. Hey, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, and gentlemen, as we tend to do, let's play a game of who's favored yeah. and by how much. Okay. Kings and Grizzle Eagles. Yeah. Also Knicks Warriors. It's Warriors. I yeah. apologize. I oh, OG right on the movie sounds like he's out. No. Oh, now he's out? Yeah, I now know. he's out. I think there's something. And he may have had a step the other day. I'm going to say they're like 16 and 2 with him. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. I'm going to watch that out of my eye just to see if that Nick style. Yeah. Let me tell you this much. OG or no OG. Nick's play against the Warriors, the way they played against the Kings, are going to win by 20. And they don't score 20. They're still going to win by 20. <laughs> Uh, who's favored by how much? Kings, well, the Kings are favored against the Grizzlies. And let's go with... I'm going to go eight and a half. Ooh, eight and a half. Kings by six and a half. By six and a half, I think. Honestly, I think I would have said Kings by five and a half. I was guessing. The Sacramento Kings are favored by 11 and a half. Oh, I know. Oh. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, by the way, see if this sounds familiar. Oh, Boston is favored by 15 and a half over the Pistons. The Kings are the second biggest favorite. Uh, interestingly enough, let's play a sub game. Okay. Knicks at Warriors, ESPN. Who's favorite by how much? Warriors by three and a half. Press your lock. Knicks by. One and a half. That's exactly what I was going to say. Next by one and a half. Warriors are favored by five and a half. Remember the other night? Wasn't it the Kings by seven and a half over the Knicks? Yep. Which we didn't understand. Right, well, that came down to four and a half, too, okay, weirdly enough. Was. But, um, and I think it's because it's probably because OG and Anobi was questionable. Yeah. That, and I mean, it still is a road game. I mean, but whatever that's worth. These days. I got to tell you something. I'm going to be really honest here. You know, my buddy who likes to be able to leave As frustrating as the Kings have been the last two weeks, he told me yesterday, this is by far his most profitable NBA season, and 80% of that profit has come from the last month and a half betting on the Sacramento Kings or against yeah. the Sacramento Kings. So I, I haven't talked to him yet, but I will guarantee you, I wouldn't say he's going heavy, heavy, but he's he's going to put a few bucks in the room. Uh, as a matter of fact, because it's too high of a number? Too high of a number. Because it's, it's just following the patterns, not getting emotional. I mean, eventually it'll break. But just following the patterns, they beat the Lakers. They destroyed the Bucks. They had a real, real crazy heartfelt game against the, the Knicks, and they lost. Now they're going up against a, a, a team that has a ton of players out. Um, a lot of new guys stepping in. It's their last game before they go on a road trip. Um, my guess is when I talk to him, he'll say, I think the Kings will win this one, but it's going to be one. It's going to be like one of those Spurs games where maybe not as close, but you know, Kings by four, Kings by eight, kind of tense all the way through. Tense all the way through. And it should be, I, I, I think his best tonight are going to be Knicks and Grizzly. 
most road trips. Yeah, he does. Well, uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, let's cross off with Styles and Watkins. We'll do celebrity birthdays. And a uh, big question for Alan Styles: Has there been a breakthrough? Maybe race trading. Mm. Yeah, talk about that. Keep it here to Sacktown Sports for the Sacramento Kings push toward the postseason. Get analysis from our local shows, breakdowns from our Kings insiders, and all the thrilling moments from the G-Man. King, quick catch, quick strike. There's another one up on the lights and in the well. Ten three-pointers made. Keegan and Murray putting on an all time scoring exhibition tonight. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah. Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah. Nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Hulk Beauty semi annual beauty event is happening now. Unleash your love for beauty. 50% off daily beauty sales on hair, skin, makeup, and fragrance. Shop your favorite brands like Tarte and Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. Plus, have perfect hair care pairs from brands like Redken and Olaplex. And check out new arrivals from brands like Charlotte Tilbury and Dyson. Shop the Ulta Beauty semi-annual beauty event online, in-store, or try pickup today. Now through March 28th. Ulta Beauty. The possibilities are beautiful. Conditions apply. You're going to feel a puff of air. Strong's Optometry oh. set their sights on staffing up. Let's try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our two o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, I'm a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric technician to keep an eye on it all. The donation drops. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. To thank you for 40 unforgettable years, Dell Technologies is celebrating with anniversary savings on their most popular tech. For a limited time only, save on select next-gen PCs like the XPS 13 Plus, powered by Intel Core processors and more. Plus, curate your dream setup with great deals on select monitors, mice, and more electronics and accessories when you shop online at dell.com slash deals you'll have access to leading edge technology and free shipping on everything again that's dell.com slash deals it's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Birthdays are meant to be spent with family and friends, and nothing brings family and friends together better than freshly baked and home delivered crumble cookies. It's time for the news of the day. The latest headlines, the biggest stories, hard hitting analysis. Yeah, this is none of those things. And now, here's Carmichael, Dave, and Jason Ross. Yeah! yeah. Come on! Woo. How about that? Come on! Woo. Look at that! Come on. Come on! We are in the presence of royalty. Yes. Radio royalty, the fastest growing show in Sacramento. True. That's right. The numbers just came That's out. That's a respectable job. Yeah. Did the numbers just come out? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Very excited. 
All right. So all thanks to everybody that's been listening. We appreciate it. Did you see how that I don't pay attention to that, Dave. Yeah. It might be the fastest shrinking show. Will we use that as a... Man, if we Honey, want. I shrunk the show. Um, the fastest moving. What we that's say. a great point. We go. are that's very nimble. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the things, um, you, uh, you, which, which now moved into a thing because you've participated... What are we doing? Like, you got to do the dude. You have to go to Stockton and do the baby race. <laughs> Did you see the that video? Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. She saw was it. cooking. She was like the De'Aaron Fox of babies. <laughs> it was crazy. That's that, the type of stuff she's just annoying. Me. That can't, she's haunting you. Yeah. She's like, yeah. Huh, look what I can do. I'm right, racing my own time. That number blows the babies. Away. Oh, dude, you would have won by like baby fur walls. Yes, yeah. but it's a, it's a familiar area, familiar space. You know Big what? Stage. Big stage is different. Go to the G League. Yeah. Get get your whatever, and then right, right. and then come on up to the big show again. I mean, I know. what else? What else do we have? I know. You know. I know. We will. I'll, I'll make you a deal. I know the guy. If you re-enter her, we will run regular station imaging. For a month that says your home of the baby race champ, <laughs> right? We would like why not? Why only a month? Right, well, I'm right. just because I can't over promise. It's not, I don't run the state champ, you're not. Right? I'll, I'll talk to the boss, right. I'll talk right. to the boss, and see. So you're reigning baby defending. race champ, defending, defending. And, still. and still, and still also yeah. home of the fastest growing show, yes, on the radio, mm-hmm. maybe in the world. We don't. We don't know. Actually, that. based on some of the numbers we saw, they love us internationally. Uh, we, <laughs> we saw the same thing. We got a huge. We're, we're where are we big in St. St. Louis? Louis, bro? Yeah, we have yeah. almost as many downloads in St. Louis as here, and there's like hundreds. Like it's insane. Yeah. What the hell is going Grab on in some St. Ribs Louis? And listen to uh, right. Was, listen to some Zach weird. Sports. Was it in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, yeah. It was like Sweden. I know we had Russia. Yeah, we, had, we had one had Russia. Russia. We had yeah. one Russia. I think we had some Alaska too. Oh, you're thinking of Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Mm, that's right. Saskatoon. That's right. Saskatoon. Canada? Yeah. 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 Shout out to all our people. Uh, uh, today is a National Sloppy Joe Day. It's a special day for me. That's your day. That is my day yeah. when the when the wife and kids are well, hell, just when the wife's gone through the kids. Sloppy Joe time. Mm-hmm. When my wife's home, never sloppy Joe's. Oh, you're right. I should have. Damn it, Chris. Uh, like when I'm gone, my wife makes eggs, cheese, and rice for dinner. Because I, I can't, that's just not dinner to me. Eggs, cheese, and rice. She makes pot of white rice, uh, and then it goes rice at the bottom, a little slab of butter, and then uh, and scrambled eggs, and then uh, cheddar cheese on top and melts. It's actually good. It's a good breakfast. It reminds me of like a Hawaiian type breakfast. It's like, well, I, why do you say that? I'll even send the picture in. I opened up the cabinet this morning to get my little Nutrigate bars. There is a case of spam. Not, That's not exactly right. Not a, not a can, a case of spam in the in the pantry. Like, I don't hate spam. I'm fine with it. Uh, she loves spam. Now, do you go sloppy Joe? You go ground beef? Oh, cool. yeah. You mean as opposed to like ground turkey? I mean that's fine. You're, yeah. but I mean, right? I do ground beef, but I also I I make fat sloppy Joes, and I don't mean that with a ph. Put I chips mean, on them? No. Come on. No. Thank you, no. Jason. Crunch. I, I yeah. Have, I have Salt. Some yeah. Some yeah. I, I, have, I have chips on the side. Maybe I need the chips because I'm going ground turkey. I put uh, mayo on the hamburger bun. Mayo. On a sloppy joe. Then the sloppy joe. And then a slice of American cheese. I'm with you on the American cheese. Yeah. Okay. Mayo. That was a chip. Uh, today is also National Awkward Moments uh, Day. I had one on Friday. Kind of stuck with me all weekend long. You guys don't remember? Oh, remember when yes. then you informed me of something right, that I right. was one hundred percent aware oh, that right, I wasn't, right, but you right. did. Yeah, yeah, that was awkward for me. Yeah. That, that and Whitey police and stuff all weekend long. <laughs> Whitey's mad at me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not touching that. Wow, really? Yeah. It's that bad? Well, I I should have called just, him. My name's Bennett. I'm not in it. Look, all I care about is this: whose side are you on? My name's Bennett. I'm not in it. Celebrity birthdays brought to you. That means they're on our side. Celebrity birthdays brought to you by. He said it without saying it, basically. 
Uh, Combo Cookies, hey, listen, when you need support from your friends, no better place than right here. <laughs> Crumble Cookies. Nothing quite says sorry. Nothing that's quite right. says Hey, is that, is that, you think that's what I should do? I mm-hmm. think. I think, I think, think that so. Crumble Cookies. Mm-hmm. I think the cheese is standing alone on this one. <laughs> Jason Ross, <laughs> National <laughs> Awkward Moment Day. Happy birthday, Queen Latifah. Mm. Gonna stop the queen. Fifty-four. Mm. Mm. I feel like she's fifty-six. I feel like she's fifty-seven. Nope, because she's fifty-eight. Mm. We have a correct answer, and it goes to Alan Styles, fifty-four. Boom! Shoot up! Job. Happy birthday, Vanessa Hudgens. Ann Hudgens Williams. Vanessa Williams, correct. Williams. What was her song? She remember she had that song and. It, it was like Don Johnson, Bruce Willis, and really Vanessa. Slow. Vanessa. Yeah, it was really it was a really good one too. I forget. Um, uh, Vanessa Williams, they love great in the movie Eraser. Uh, she, yeah. she is fifty eight. I actually think she's the big six. So oh, I hope you're wrong. Yeah. Um, Boy, that a crush on her. I'd say fifty seven. Fifty nine. Uh, what did you say? Sixty. Alan's the closest, 61. No. Wow. Uh, happy birthday, Dane. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Not wait. Save the best for last. Not the org. Save the best. Save the best for last. We need Dane Cook. Yeah. Uh, Dane Cook. Yeah. 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 He's lame. Uh, I'll say he's 50. Yeah, yeah, I think he came in late, which <laughs> makes me feel like. All right. mm. I'm, I'm going to go 40. Super young wife. I know that. 45. 52. The correct answer it goes to Christopher Lott. 52 for Dane Cook. Huge wow. Dane Cook guy back there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Dane Cook guy. Super finger. <laughs> Happy birthday, Scal. If Dane Cook opened for Creed, would that be like, oh, man, we got to go. Scal oh. BCA, real fast. Oh, oh, that's Scal. Uh, Scal is 30. No, he's nice. 28. Yeah. 28. 27. 29. Ah. That's right. 26. Uh, good adjustment. Correct answer. Dave Carmack Lave. 28. Uh, coming up on the show. A lot of Kings talk, recapping the Knicks game, what happened against the Big Apple. I'm looking forward to one of those games hey, against the Grizzlies. Hey, Jess, I don't know the answer. Are you going to get into the uh, Giants PA at all? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're we're doing that at 1130. All right. Styles and Walk is the fastest growing show in the world coming up right after this. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SmackDownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with